What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome. It is your humble live stream host, Timothy J. Ward, back with another live stream. Today's stream is for everybody. It's for everybody. But especially the beginning part, when I go through my rant, I go through my spiel. The beginning part is especially, how you doing, Rebecca? Is especially for anyone first, is especially for anyone might be a little lost in life, trying to figure out their meaning, their purpose, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if we have a meaning or purpose in this life, but if you're looking for something to make this life purposeful, make this life uh, meaningful, Carla checking in, investment, lights, camera, books, Moses, hello. If you're looking for a way to make this life purposeful, make this life meaningful, my advice as the title says, do what you love with people you love. We're going to break this down. We're going to get into this. This is my life motto in general. Anybody who knows me knows this is my life motto. Do what you love with people you love. Okay. And the more I use it, the more it is helping my life out. Like whenever I find myself now in life and I don't know what direction to go in, I just go by my motto. I'm like, What's something I love and how can I find a way to do it with people I love? Or if you can't make both work, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's like, hey, what's something I love to do? I'm going to do that. Or who's somebody I love hanging out with? I'm going to go hang out with them. There's a book by that name. They stole it from me. They stole it from me. If there's not a book by that name, that might be my book. But hey, smart people, whoever wrote that book, sir, ma'am, you're a genius, pretty smart Whenever you're, whenever I'm looking for direction in life, that's one of the things I do. I'm just like, that's why I'm in Denver right now. That's why I'm in Denver right now. I was up in the Grand Canyon. Things were not going well. I kind of wanted to leave, but I kind of wanted to stay. And I was kind of in that limbo period. I was like, man, I'm, I, the situation is great. The vibe just ain't what I like up here. Uh, and then my current roommate now called, you know, and he's like, hey, would you think about coming down to Denver? We talked about getting a place. He's a good friend of mine. I got another another really good friend of mine down here. Um, and, you know, I was like, you know what? It's the mountains. Like, I love Denver. I like that area. I hadn't done a lot of exploring in this area. I was like, there's a lot of the things I like to do in that area. And there's some people I really care about down there. I'm like, you know what? I said, let me think about it. I thought about that. As soon as that thought hit me, I was like, you know what? That's my motto. Do what you love with people you love. I'm going and I'm here and it's really worked out. Carla, uh, you said, do you think everyone has a purpose? I. This is another area, Carla, I think, where words. Get in the way of like actual life. OK, um, I don't know if everyone has a purpose like a predetermined, because if you have a set purpose, that basically means it's predetermined. Purpose basically means this is why you're here. So it would have to be like predetermined. So I don't know if everybody has that. And that's why I say, I think the word gets in the way of life. Does everybody want to live a purposeful life? You know, does everybody want to live a life that has meaning to them? Yeah, but do we all have like this preconceived purpose? I don't know. Can you come up with something that you're like, hey, I think this is, to me, this is my, pur I've decided this is my purpose. I think we can. But I don't know if there, this ideal of everyone one day is going to be like, oh, this is why I came here. I think like, you know, and, and I look at it this way. When, like, for example, when we're kids. When we're kids and the world is fresh and new and we're always exploring, we're always just doing new stuff, you never ask about the purpose of life. It's only adults. And typically when life has beat us down and trapped us in, <laughs> tra tra trapped us in like the matrix and the hamster wheel, stuff like that, typically that's the only time we talk about purpose. We talk about purpose when like we're not really like living the life we want to be living. I feel like then we're like, what's my purpose? Why am I here? But when you're, you know, enjoying life, doing something you really love, hanging out with people, you never think about purpose. You know, think about the last time you did something that was super fun. You really enjoyed it. You never thought about purpose that whole time. 
we only think about purpose when things aren't going our way. We're kind of down, we're kind of depressed, can't figure out what to do. And so that's why I think that's kind of the wrong way to look. I don't think we should be looking for a purpose in life. I think we should just be trying to live like the best life possible. You know what I mean? And I think if you live the best life possible, it will put you on a path that maybe in hindsight, you'll be like, oh, you or you might. You might stumble across something and be like, oh, I think this is what I was supposed to do. I think this is my purpose. You might. Or you might just live an amazing life and never worry about purpose again. So like, I don't, I don't, yeah, that's why I, I don't like to say, oh, fine. I used to say, find your purpose. I don't know. Like, I just think it's, I think it's about living. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I say. I think sometimes we have these words and these concepts and we live our life to fit the concept or the word. And it really doesn't mean nothing. Like, you know, when we're enjoying life, we don't care about purpose. And I think that's really what we're put here to do is to as much as possible, like experience life, enjoy life. If you stumble across a purpose, cool. But if not, as long as you enjoy your life, that's cool, too. You know. You know, I, I think it's crazy. We live in we live in a time period in a society. A lot of us we're you know, we have to have these discussions and we have to all of us, myself included, remind ourselves sometimes that it's OK to do what you like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's to remind ourselves like it's OK to spend time with loved ones. You know, I remember doing, you know, like 2020 when a lot of times people were, you know, we had to stay home. You know, do you remember some of you? It might have been some of us, some of y'all. Um, but I think we all know people that even though they made us stay home. They made us stay home. Y'all remember flatten the curve, all that. They made us stay home. And in most cases, they paid us. You remember people still felt guilty. Some of us did. You remember there was still a lot of guilt going around because people were like, I'm supposed to be working. I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be doing that. And they're like, no, sit at the house, be with your family, and we'll pay y'all. And we still felt guilty. In the beginning, near the end, people was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good now. The guilt's done now. Give me them jacks. Uh, I ain't trying to go back to work. But like, in the beginning, we still felt guilty because we're so programmed to think like we need to be doing something. We need to be accomplishing something. When actually the big accomplishments in life are like the little ones. Doing things you like to do, hanging out with loved ones, the stuff that there's no there's no metric for, the stuff that there's no title for, you know what I mean? The stuff that there's no awards for. You know, no one's gonna look at you and be like, oh, you spent 30 hours last week doing what you love. Oh, snap, you hustler. You know what I mean? No one's gonna, you know, you don't get there's no cool hashtags for 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 you know just chilling with your kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's no there's no glory and glamour and all that. But that's like the stuff that I feel like we really enjoy the most. And it's crazy. We have to like remind ourselves of that because the programming tells us no. The programming uses that when it wants to get you to do something else. Oh, if you work really, 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 really hard, then you'll be able to provide that life for your family. And then it, 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 it uses the ideal of loved ones, family, sometimes to try to get you to do what it wants you to do. It uses the ideal of, oh, if you buy this, buy that, have this, buy that, then you can do the stuff you love on a better level. If you have the right vehicle, you know, you'll see it in the, in the commercials. You have the right vehicle. You can go to the mountains. But it's like, I can do that anyway. You know what I mean? They use that stuff to make us do what they want us to do. But at the end of the day, we could do all that stuff without playing their game. You know what I mean? Yeah, incognito. That that's another thing. Like there's the whole, there's this whole, you know, and, and I don't want to, you know, step on any toes, you know. Um, I, I never talk about anyone else's spiritual religious beliefs, do you? You know, at the end of the day, I think we're all talking about the same entity. Uh, we just call it different names and, and interact with it differently and think it does different things. But I definitely do think there is this, once again, this form of control where they say, oh, this is the divine plan. You have to do this to be part of it. I don't know if that's always true. You know, I think that's different for everyone. 
Yeah, Carla, same with you. I, I'm I'm all over the place. Multi. I like that multi passionate. Ooh, um, you know what I mean. So it's hard. You know, it, it it's hard to one thing with me in life. So yeah, you can be, you know, you can be all over the place as long, you know, I feel like as long as it falls within that, Hey, this is what I love to do. Even as I love to do right now, or, you know, I'm currently, you know, and these are the people I'm kicking it with right now. You know what I mean? Like then go for it, you know? Hey, mama Max only working six days this month. Nice. Nice. Slacker. I'm joking. I'm joking. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Steven, um, said his purpose, like the American dream, as in it's different for everyone and not everyone has to achieve it. Find what it means. I feel like, yeah, it's another one of those things that people come up with and try to like, the American dream is a little different because there was a, it's a set thing for a lot of people. For me, you know, growing up, this was the American dream. This is what you need to do. Uh, purpose. A lot of times people aren't as direct about what it are specific about what it is, but it's another thing where people try to make it seem like there's something that you're not doing that you need to be finding or doing. And I'm like, I just don't feel like that has to be the case or that it has to be, you know, this intimidating thing or this lifelong search, you know, I'm, I'm big on what strikes you that you want to do right now. And how can you get to doing it? <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be that, you know, that deep, <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty, I have to look at kids. Kids have it figured out. If you want to know what life should look like, look at a four-year-old. I'm always about the, the unlearned life, unlearning all this stuff we've been programmed to believe. If you want to know what life should be like, look at like a four-year-old, three-year-old, a baby. You know what I mean? They don't wake up in the morning and just be like, I mean, if they're in a good home environment. You know, they don't wake up in the morning and just be like, why am I here? They just start finding stuff to do. You got to stop them from doing stuff. Hey, hey, put that down. Put that down. Stop. N not in your mouth. No. Put that down. Stop. Get in the house. Like, you you mean? I don't babysit much, but, you know, when I be on the phone with people with kids, they're hanging out with people with kids. There's a lot of, no, stop this. Why? Because they're all over the place. We get old and we just don't, we just sit on the couch. We can work and we come home and sit on the couch. And then we, that's why we ask questions like, why am I here? What is the, because we've stopped the doing. We've stopped the, you know, the, the curiosity, the exploration, the joy. Kids got it figured out. And it didn't take no radical, crazy, you know, spiritual awakenings. <laughs> they, just, You know what I mean? They just, it pops in their head, they do it. Like, I feel like we should do more of that as adults. If it pops in your head and you got the means and the time and the opportunity to do it, do it. Or find the means and the opportunity and the time to do it, you know? Andrew, that's that's another thing about our society. We work so hard. Uh, once again, I'm not anti-money, but our, a lot of our views on money are, are crazy. Like this ideal of you have, to, you have to work so hard, save up so much money, and then maybe you can do some cool stuff and fun stuff is, is, is like ass backwards. Like I feel like it should be like, hey, live your life doing cool stuff and, and then, you know, make as much money as you need to make it in this society. Unless you're somebody, there are some people who I think left to their own devices would always want big stuff and, you know, whatever. But I think most of us don't. Like most of us just want to be comfortable and like enjoy ourselves. But we have this ideal that like, no, I have to get so much money before I can enjoy myself because like, what if something happens? What if blah, 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 blah. And it's like newsflash, that stuff's going to happen anyway. And a lot of times it might not, you know what I mean? It might not, or it might. That's the same either way. There's no amount of money you can save up to where nothing bad is going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, bro, like enjoy your life. It's not about the money. For, we're all about getting to the bag, GTB. The kids these days, they grow up thinking about getting, you know what I mean? What do you want to do when you grow up? Get get paid. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't have, you know what I mean? Like, they just, it's like, bro, like, nah, it should be about doing what you love, what people you love. Hey, how do I come up with enough money to do that? As opposed to, I'm going to make as much money as possible, spend all my time doing that, and then maybe I can do this other stuff. That's just how I see it. That's just how I see it. Diane checking in from Texas. Okay. Underrated. I appreciate you asking people to hit the like button. Thank you so much. That really helps the stream out. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for comfort. I'm all I want everyone to be comfortable, you know? I want everyone to be comfortable. 
but there's a lot of us who are comfortable and we're making ourselves uncomfortable because of some of like our thought processes, you know, we're comfortable and we're worried about getting to that next level. You know what I mean? Like it's, we just can't embrace, Oh, I'm comfortable. I'm doing well. Now what? You know what I mean? Like, Oh, I could, you know, now it's time to start enjoying life. It's like, Oh no, I'm comfortable. I'm doing well, but I'm not doing as well as, as her. So let me get up there. I'm not doing as well as her. Let me get, up. it's like, what are you doing? What are you going to do up there? What are you going to do with that next promotion or, you know, that next raise if you already good? Because if you good now, if you comfortable now and you're not living the life you really want to live, that promotion ain't going to bring it. That raise ain't going to bring it. Not that there's anything wrong with either of those. I like getting promotions. I like getting raises. I like money. But like money is used to live the life I want to live. Like if you ain't enjoying life, what's the point of having all that money? You know what I mean? Uh, Mundu. No, I don't live in an RV. Um, right now I'm in an apartment. I haven't had an RV, uh, going on probably like four years now. Uh, yeah. So no, I'm not living in an RV currently. There's a guy on YouTube goes around asking people what they thought was important when they were young, but is it anymore? The answer is always money. I'm telling you know, people, people get very, this is why I keep talking about this topic, even though people get very offended by it or very triggered, I should say. Because, and that's how I know the day people stop getting triggered when I start when I stop talking about money, when I start talking about money, let me start that whole sentence over. The day people stop getting triggered when I start talking about money is the day I will stop talking about money. Because as long as people get triggered about me talking about an inanimate object, it's, it ain't even really an object, it's ones and zeros on a computer screen now. The day, like when the fact that people get triggered by that lets me know I need to continue to talk about it. The day when everyone's like, yeah, Tim, we know money ain't real. Um, I'm like, oh, job's done. Let me go talk about something else. Uh, but yeah, we this is the programming, man. We we sow money, 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 even though everybody, a lot of rich people, a lot of older people, they'll tell you, bro, like don't even. And, and I found in my life when I make decisions not based on money, that's usually when the money comes. Let me say that again, because I don't talk finance as much. I'm telling you, my life, the times when I made decisions not based on money, but I made it based on do what I love, what people I love, what my gut was telling me, what I really want to do. That's when the money came. When I did decisions based solely on money, the money got messed up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I wasn't it, a lot of times it wasn't in line with 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 who I am or my beliefs or my values or it put me in 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 close proximity or in business with other people who were just about the money. So they might not have been the most honest, trustworthy. You know what I mean? When you when it's so when you when you when you do something solely about the money, you attract other people who solely about the money. They typically not the most honest people. When I'm rocking with other people that just love life and we have similar passions, we can link up and make some money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or we help each other out. We don't need no money, you know? But the, 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 a guy told me this years ago. I was, and I actually took his advice. Surprisingly, years ago, I was going to leave a job and I was going to, uh, someone was going to help me set up a business. Uh, and it wasn't, not, not that anything, not that there was any dishonesty between me and the person who's going to help me set up the business. It just was kind of spur of the moment and it wasn't a good fit at the time for either of us in hindsight. Uh, and a guy at the job, older guy, he's probably, I was 20. So he was like late fifties. And he's like, tell him like, I know it sounds like you'd be making good money, blah, blah, blah. He's like, don't just make decisions based on money, Tim. He's like, cause it's not always worth it. He's like, you got a, a good thing here. You're learning some stuff. He's like, it's not always worth it. I actually listened to his advice. Um, and in hindsight, I'm like, I'm so glad I did that. Uh, because yeah, I don't think it would have worked out. Steven, I'm in the Denver, Colorado area now. Hey, Sammy B, what's up? So like looking back, that's why I love the fact that I'm finally in my 40s, got a little age on me because I'm looking back at life and I'm like, wow, that's so true. All the times I made decisions, like just trying to get to the money, a lot of times I ended up broke. <laughs> and then I had nothing. You know what I mean? Because I was, it was all about the money. And then when the money didn't come, I had nothing. But the times I made decisions based on, oh, I wanted to do that. It seems like that's when the money came. And if it didn't come, I didn't care because I wanted to do that. Even if I did something because I really want to do it. 
and I ended up broke. Guess what? Going into it, I knew I might end up broke, so I didn't care. Everybody, dang, you you, you struggling, brother. Like, yeah, man, I already knew. I already knew if I did so-and-so, it'd probably end up like this. But, hey, that's what I wanted to do. I had fun doing it. You know what I mean? We're here now. Watch me come up out this hole. Watch me get back to comfort. Uh, Steven, I went to San Francisco a couple weeks ago. Uh, two, three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good time, good time. Uh, I definitely, off-grid, did not think 10 years ago that I would have 100,000 plus followers, uh, you know, a video with over a million views. Uh, you know, and, and, and all the love, you know what I mean? I definitely did not think I would I would be a part of such an awesome community, get so much love, so many amazing comments on a daily basis, so many heartwarming warming messages like, you know, definitely would not. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't like to speculate too much why people watch and, and appreciate the content, but, uh, I, I, I will say, I think we all, you know, I think, you know, same reason I, I enjoy other people's content. I think, you know, sometimes there's things maybe I want to do and it's good to see someone else doing it to, to, you know, show me I can do it, you know, give me that motivation, that inspiration. There's a dude, uh, who walked across America a couple years ago, and he kind of chronicled, chronic, chronicled it, you know, day pretty much every couple days. And so he's got like a hundred videos in the play, 72 videos in the playlist. Um, and so I'm watching that and it's really like encouraging me to like come up with something cool. Like, I don't know, I wouldn't probably walk across America, but I'm like, I really want to come up with something cool, kind of a cool challenge or something like that to do. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's just good to like see other people's content and, and you know, push yourself. One second, folks, I got an important message I want to respond to. Cool, cool. Oh, off grid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super chat squad. I appreciate the love. Super chat squad said it's funny, a friend. And I always joke that we have more money now than ever. But for whatever reason, we're more content with life uh, when we report. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super chat squad. Appreciate that love. Thank you. Uh, I think what happens is. You know, as your money goes up, you start to look at things differently based on that money level, because that's what society has programmed us to do. Not to mention, you have to worry about losing that money. Like when you broke, yeah, you just like, hey, I just need to come up out of this. You're not worried about going no further down because you broke. Trust me, I've been there. Like I'm always going to say I'm broke, but I've been broke, broke before. You know, uh, ramen noodles, you know, Totino's pizza late on the rent broke. You know what I mean? When you're there, your only worry is going up. You know what I mean? But when you <laughs> like to... When you start getting some money, guess what? Society tells you you need to continue to worry about going up, but then you also got to worry about going down. So it's almost, I'm telling you, it's almost worse. You don't have enough money, according to society. Oh, you good, but you ain't that good. But then you also have to worry about, dang, I ain't trying to lose it, go broke again. It's almost more of a struggle. You almost happy you're broke, bro. Like if you broke and making it, you, I said that in one of my car chats. If you broke and happy, you, 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 you mean like that's the best ever broke and happy. Can't nobody do nothing to you. Are they going to take I'm broke. You can't take nothing from me. I'm already broke. If I'm broke and happy, I just got to keep doing what I'm doing now. And <laughs> if you up and happy, you have to worry about being down. Like, dang, if I lose it all, will I still be happy? You broke and happy, man. You can't. Can't nobody say nothing to you. Can't nobody say nothing to you. Broke and happy. Super Cat Squad. Appreciate the love. Would I try veganism for a month as a challenge? Uh, I don't. I currently, Sean, no. I'm laughing because I just went and when I walked to the store and got a coffee, I got me a big juicy T-bone as well. So um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that worked for me. Eric said, "All you can eat sushi place for under thirty dollars." Dang, life is good. Where that at? Drop the drop the location. I'm just I'm just messing with you, man. Hey, truth, love, and courage. Good to see you. Uh. The, the flat earth stuff, I've I've had discussions with people about that before. I'm going to be honest with you, truth, love, and courage. I just don't care. 
You know what I mean? Is it possible the Earth is flat? Yes. Is it possible the Earth is round? Yes. Is it possible the Earth is a is a is a, is a spherical, uh, a squarical octagon? Yes. I don't. You be like it just doesn't matter to me. Like if it came out tomorrow, the Earth is flat. It wouldn't change anything in my life. You know what I mean? So like that's why it's just not one of the things that I'm curious about. You know. Hey, Jumi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you know what I mean? I'm all about, uh, it says true, but what about a place to stay and stuff? Because they can't take your house and stuff. They can. <laughs> oh, they can. Like, first off, they can. But yeah, I'm all about getting, like I said, I want everyone to be comfortable. So get to that level of comfort that's right for you. And a lot of, in our society these days, that takes money. You can't just go out and build a cabin in the woods like our ancestors could. Build a, a, a hut in the woods, like our ancestors is good. So I'm like, get to that level. But beyond that, a lot of times we continue striving instead of now, like, okay, I'm comfortable. I'm good. What now? You know, or even in the framework of doing that. Okay. I got the house I want. I do have to stay here and pay this mortgage, but in my downtime and my off time, how can I set up work? How can I set up my work-life balance, which I don't believe in? How can it let, yeah. How can I set up my life so that I can do what I love, enjoy my life as much as possible while I'm maintaining the house and keeping the kids and clothes and food and all this other stuff. But I think a lot of times, man, we just so, we get comfortable and we still struggle because we want more, even though we don't really want more. Hey, John, I'm glad you liked that video. The I understand why gurus don't have jobs. Yeah, man. That's it. You know, you know, sometimes I get some really good thoughts going. It's not, I mean, because we're not, we're not meant to have jobs, bro. Like, I'm not anti-work, not anti-jobs, but like, we're not meant to have jobs. We're meant to work, but not work like for, we're not meant to work for someone else. That's not how our ancestors did it. You want to know how we were meant to like live? Look at how they lived in the past. We could still have all the technology and all this stuff and not work for other people. I just think we weren't meant to like jobs. I think we're supposed to go, we're meant to go out there and get it for each, each one go out there and get it for his or her family and then help out the other people in the tribe, in the community who may not have it. But we've created a middleman, like, okay, I go to work, someone pays me, then hopefully I can take that money and buy the things I need. What happened to the days you just went out and got the things you need? Like, that's all I'm saying, you know? And I think most gurus have figured that out to a point where, like, they it's hard for them to work for anyone else. You know what I mean? And they're just like, I can't do it. Abaday, I always get your name wrong. I'm just going to call you a, a day. <laughs> a day what up what up what up i'm enjoying this beautiful day yeah I was, yeah yeah I, I i need to after this is over i'm probably gonna take a walk you know get out there you know enjoy myself yeah john that's a good one that's a good one that one helps me a lot um john said i had anxiety about paying one of my bills i thought back about uh what tim said about being grateful to have the money to pay for the bill game changer it is so much in life is perspective that's the thing that helps especially around tax time do me a favor. Remind me of this. Remind me of what I said uh, around about April 2nd uh, when I have to drop that that check on the IRS. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it, it, it's perspective. It's like, hey, I'm happy I got the money to pay the bill. You're like, man, $300 for the But it's like, oh, I'm happy. That reminds me. I got a medical bill. I got to pay some money on tomorrow. Uh, but it's like, yeah, $300. But it's like, oh, I'm grateful I have the $300 to pay it. You know what I mean? You ever been to the dentist and they like, oh, you got like three cavities. That's going to be like $400. Okay, three cavities, six hundred dollars. Um, and you like six hundred dollars, blah blah blah. Then it's like, oh, I'm grateful I have. I th this is my perspective now. Oh, I'm grateful I have the money to get the cavities done. Like, what if I didn't have the money, and I got these cavities and they're hurting me? You know what I mean? So like, that's the, yeah, that's why I look at bills. I'm grateful I have the money to pay it. I'm, I remember the days I didn't. I told you I've been broke before, so broke, broke. So like, yeah, that that helps your perspective, and it also gives you empathy. The more gratitude you have for your situation, the more empathetic you are for other people's situation. Empathetic, sympathetic, whatever is the right word. I never get those two right. 
um, because you're like, man, I'm grateful I have the money to pay that bill. And you think about people who don't. And you're like, man, that, you know what I mean? Like, and it makes you more willing to give, more generous, more giving. Because you're like, man, I got the money to pay my bills. I'm good. Uh, I'm sure there's people who might not. Let me, you know, get online and drop some money for so-and-so. Or let me call so-and-so and see if she good. Or, you know, or let me, you know, give something to the, the homeless guy who's always on the corner standing there. Let me let me drop him five bucks. You know what I mean? Help him out. You know what I mean? Like, it, it all works together. That's why I always say sometimes it's good to be selfish and 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 do things for ourselves and work on ourselves because it always if you're good within you'll you'll be good without once you get the life that you really want to live and you're like genuinely happy there is no way you will not pass that for pass that on pay it for it think look at all the happy people you know they're the most generous giving thoughtful smiling waving make you feel better people you that you know you just get, you know, once you're good within, you'll be great without, you know. So, oh, uh, I'm behind all these comments, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get caught up. Christelle, you get, you got a, a job interview on Tuesday, need the job, but don't want it. Oh, well, uh, I was gonna say good luck on the interview. Well, yeah, if you need the job, good luck on the interview. We're gonna say good luck. Uh, Keith, I'm not saying we weren't meant to be part of like a community or a tribe. I'm just saying that like I don't think we were meant to work for like other people. You know, back in the day, our ancestors had tribes, but like everybody went out. You were responsible for your family. But then, like, if you say like let's talk about hunting, you go out and you bag an antelope in the in the family in the in the hut next door to yours. For some reason, you know, somebody was sick or they didn't. You know, they, you're gonna invite them over to eat eat antelope meat. Is there a fancy name for antelope meat? No. You can invite them over for antelope soup. You know what I mean? And if there's something comes up and one day you can't go out and get it on your own, they're going to come from, hey, you know what I mean? Like, I think we're meant to be, you know, our own, you know, family, lead, strong family, strong community. But the family could, you know, didn't need anyone else most of the time. But when they did, the community was there. It was like, you know, it's, it's more like it's more like sharing than like needing. It's set up now to where like most of us, you need, you know, to go to work. You know, like, yeah, I just, I just think it's, yeah, I think, but I think we're supposed to be have strong family, strong communities. We're the exact opposite now. It's almost impossible to go out and get, they make it very hard to go out and get it on your own. Families are weak, communities done, like <laughs> total opposite. Uh, Graham, I'm going to be in Denver until probably springish, roughly. Uh, see, I'm great. I'm great. Uh, what happened exciting in my life li lately? Uh, I, honestly, the reason something very exciting, the reason I titled this video, what I did this live, good friend of mine came to visit. He's actually still in town now. Shout out to my big brother, Ro, uh, his wife, Donna. They flew down, came to visit. We've been hanging out. It's been amazing. Um, I've, I've forgotten uh, how much fun me and him have. Like that's like I said, when I say big bro, like I mean that that's big bro. Um, man has taught me so much about life and was there for me through, you know, honestly, without like him being watching over me kind of, and he was there when I was in my twenties and getting drunk. And, um, I really think his influence is what kept me kind of in line. One of the things that kept me in line back then. So for him to fly out to Colorado and like, we've been, you know, doing a little hiking, went up to Red Rock. You know what I mean? Like it's, it went up to Red Rocks. I, sometimes I don't finish sentences. We went up to Red Rocks, uh, you know, went out to dinner, him and his wife, you know, him and his wife. See, I did it again. Didn't finish the sentence. Went out to dinner, him and his wife. Like it's just been amazing. And it reminded me like, oh, this is what life's about. This is what life's about. Just people you really love and care about, spending time, laughing, joking, um, you know, we both, we both middle-aged now, so we ain't doing none of the crazy stuff. You know, we, we kept saying that. It's like, man, like we just, you know, we went to the aquarium, you know, looking at fish. We just been looking at nature. He's like, man, we don't do none of the crazy stuff, which he never was too crazy. Um, well, he had his moments before I met him, but you know, he's like, man, we do old man stuff now. We, <laughs> we taking pictures of rocks and clouds and, you know, we just eating, you know what I mean? Like it was pretty cool. It was, it, 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 and I'm like, you know what? This is life, man. Like, I don't, you know, all that other stuff, I'm good. Like, I just need my people and 
you know, we get together every couple, you know, every few years to see each other. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what's, something's going on. Uh, Eric said, if you have 500K in the bank, what would you do? Uh, my answer to this is always the same. It's more of the same. You know, obviously, uh, I'd probably be, tra- I would be, tra- I'll be doing the same thing, but probably on a bigger level. I'd be doing more traveling, um, you know, traveling, hanging out with my friends. I would definitely be, if I had 500K, I'd probably be on the road nonstop. Yeah, I'd be on the road. Like, I would never, I'd be on the road nonstop. Like, I mean, I might stay somewhere for like a month or something like that, but I mean, it'd, it'd basically be the same. I'd be traveling, doing YouTube. Like there's, there's, you know what I mean? Like I, I, like what? Yeah, yeah, you know, I might buy some land. Maybe, maybe I, w- I, I might have some land and have like a, a, a Lowe's or Home Depot shed. I fixed up on it. So every now and then I might go there and hang out for a while. But yeah, it would it be more of the same? Like I don't. I feel blessed to say like I'm doing what I want to do now. I might just have different levels if I had more money in the bank. What up, Butch? Oh, there's a Lions game on now? Oh, maybe that's where everybody's at. I'm way behind on these comments. Let me get caught up. What up, Mikey? Uh, Lil Florida, I talked about this earlier. I, I really don't have an opinion on the earth being round or flat. Like, they say it's they say it's round, so I'll let them have that. You know, there's some stuff I'm not going to argue about. Like, what, how would I ever know? Short of getting in a spaceship, getting in SpaceX and going up there, like... It's not one of them things I'm gonna refute. Element, um, I not doing remote IT work because a I don't know how to do IT work, and currently at the moment I don't need to. So yeah. Benny, there was a time you said the reason we can't just go get what we want, uh, what we need is because one person can't make everything we need. Here's the thing: I once again I look back at our ancestors. You have to understand the world, the world is the way it is now because we made it this way. There was a time when you could go out and build a build a house. You and your family could build a house, shelter. You and your family could hunt, gather food. You use the skins from the animals to make clothes. There was a time when you could go out and get everything you needed. We changed that. We changed that. When we stopped being nomadic people, we settled down, industrial revolution, we changed the world. We got it away from that. But the world was set up. We were placed here on a planet that has everything we need and everyone had free opportunity to go get it. That's all I'm saying. The reason a lot of times we're not happy is because like deep down inside, we know this ain't the way the world's supposed to be. I just hunger for that time when like I could wake up every morning and know, okay, I was in control of my survival. I didn't have to do interviews and all, you know what I mean? Like you just, Hey, I'm a grown man. I'm gonna go get it. It's a different world, but we made it a different world. Will said, I'm an Asian dude in his, uh, in his young thirties wanting to move from Idaho to Idaho from Arizona. Should I just do it? Should you definitely do it? Will do it, do it. I understand being scared, but yeah, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. I think, you know, Idaho's totally different from Arizona, you know? So, yeah. 1984. Applying for your first seasonal job for next summer. Nice, nice, nice. Where are you trying to go? Will, I feel like I didn't leave you with enough there. Idaho's an amazing state, different from Arizona, but you probably will like that. If you're thinking about moving to Idaho, you probably want to change from Arizona. I say go. Worst case scenario, you move back to Arizona, you know? Bison, check it in. Uh, top ranking. I use epidemic uh, sounds for music in my videos. When I put music in it, uh, I think it's like twenty bucks, nineteen ninety nine a month. You know, but it guarantees you ain't got to run into all that copyright stuff. So, yeah, I use epidemic sounds. Uh, there's some other ones, but I know a lot of creators use epidemic sounds, and they got a vast library. So, yeah. Keith, I feel you on that. He said, I'm doing my own thing with my business, but I feel like I'm missing being part of the work structure and community because I'm solo. I get that a thousand percent. I get that a thousand percent. Uh, That's one of the things I struggle with sometimes is just like when it's me just doing my own stuff. 
you know, there's a part of me that really wants to be a part of a team. And so that is one thing I'm, I'm trying to figure out for myself, like, how do I get that perfect balance of, okay, I feel like I'm part of something, but I also have as much freedom as possible. You know, so we say, I still haven't figured that out, but I think it's, yeah, we, we, we hunger to be part of community. You know, um, I've said before, I had jobs I really loved because the people who worked there, the job was cool, but the people who worked there, I knew they had my back. I had theirs. You know, we talked at work. A lot of times we rode to work together. It was just a, like a little small family. You know what I mean? I missed that. You know, so I totally feel like you. Island Fly Girl, I'm preparing for retirement by trying to set up some some passive income streams that hopefully will still be paying off in, in, in you know, when I get older. I don't really prepare for retirement. I would prefer to say preparing for, you know, when I get older. Like I, this, like I really don't even look at life like working, retiring anymore. Um, the fact that we call our, you mean that just shows how much we've all been programmed and bought into the system that you will work until you retire. Because we don't even like, we don't say, how are you preparing for your 60s or 70s? We say, how are you preparing for retirement? Which automatically tells you, oh, you're going to work until then. You, you see that? You see that? Our, our language lets us know what we believe. The fact that when someone's talking about your 60s and 70s, they call it retirement. And retirement is what you do after you've worked your whole life. Shows that we believe you're supposed to work your whole life. <laughs> like it's just, that just actually hit me. The fact that we use that word just shows every time you say, what do you play for retirement? We're asking when you're done working your life away, what are you going to do? Not there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just saying it would seem more natural for people to ask you, Hey, what are you going to do when maybe you can't work? Or like when you get in your 67, you know what I mean? We don't say that. We always say retirement. It's, it's interesting. But for me, I'm just trying to set some things up. So when maybe the body can't do what it does now, I'll be able to still, you know, pay the bills. Hey, Priya, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, single men and women can just be friends. Yes, I totally think we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. Give me a second. Super chat squad. I'm gonna get back to that. I want to read some of these comments because I talked about that the other day. So give me a minute. We'll, we'll get, we'll get back to that, uh, that question, but super chat squad. Thank you. Where we at? What's up Tobozu? Yeah, Mikey, 9 p.m. is late when you get old. Outdoor Matt, you want to be a YouTuber? Go for it. The cost of entry is, is free. You can just start making videos on your phone. You know, it, it it's it's the fact that the cost of entry is free means that anybody can do it. But it also means that anybody can do it. You know what I mean? There's a lot more competition, but like, bro, if you got a knack for it and you stick to it like it, it could it can pay off you know so yeah go for it go for it. I, I think it's one of the best jobs going um i shouldn't even call it a job i think it's one of the best ways to generate income eventually going rest in faith hello bradley said how you do with boredom any spiritual perspectives on sitting alone with nothing happening well those are two very different questions so when i'm when i'm the times when I find myself getting bored, I make myself go do something. Like if I'm at the house and I'm like, man, I'm bored. I'll be like, I'll, I'll just make myself go for a walk. I'll drive down to the state park and go for a walk or go walk across the street or I'll call somebody. Like when I find myself bored, I just do something. Because a lot of times we're bored and then we don't do anything. We stay being bored. So yeah, I just make myself do something. A, a walk usually helps me. Um, sitting alone with nothing happening is the total opposite from boredom you know, for me a lot of times, um, because like, I really feel there, there's some things you learn just sitting, meditating, contemplating. There's some things you learn that you're not going to learn otherwise. So I definitely think there's, there's something spiritual to just like doing nothing. Now, if you're bored, if you're, you're like, oh, I'm feeling bored. I'm just going to sit here. It might not get you to them levels. You have to like actively want to like, I feel like sit and meditate and do nothing for it to kind of work. Like if you're already bored and you're like, well, I'm just going to sit here. It, you're probably going to stay feeling bored. 
But like, if you're, if you, if you're enjoying, you know, the moment and you're like, Oh, I'm just gonna do some meditating, then it works. But um, yeah, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm bored, I just make myself go do something. Like I don't, I, I don't allow myself to be bored. Like I'm like, Tim, there's a billion things to do. Tulsa, what up, what up, what up? Good to see you. I think homesteading is amazing. Um, you know, if, if you're willing to put in the work to do it. What's up, Christine? Tulsa, um, I, Montana just felt more like home to me than Colorado. Um, part of that was probably because I lived in a smaller town. Bozeman's smaller than like Denver. Uh, Denver, you know, you know, and there's so many different areas in Colorado, but Montana just kind of spoke to me more. I mean, I lived in Bozeman. It's two hours from Yellowstone. You're surrounded by lakes and rivers and mountains. Like it was just a beautiful city. You know what I mean? Denver's a little bigger. Even the area I live isn't like downtown, but like you just have more city stuff. Uh, you kind of had, it's changing, but you kind of have like a different vibe of people who lived in Montana. You know what I mean? Um, most people who live in Montana or where, where I lived in Montana were there because they liked the outdoors and you know what I mean? And I did too. You know what I mean? That's not there's a lot of people in Colorado who are here for that, but you run into people. You know what I mean? Just the the the. I just felt more at home in Montana. Yeah, but Colorado's amazing too. Like I love Colorado too, but yeah, Montana just felt more like home. How how civilized people in our, today in our world should be? Uh. That's kind of our question. I don't I don't know if I could say anybody should be anyway. You know what I mean? I hunger for the for the primitive old ways. I think that's how we're meant to live. But like in today's society, since we don't have that, I mean, you know, it's hard to say how civilized people should live. Preach out back to your question. Um, I think single men and women can be friends, but you have to both parties have to say this is what we're doing. And the reason it doesn't work a lot is because both parties don't make that choice. If both parties are adults and say, hey, we're just going to be friends, then you'll just be friends. If one person crosses the line, you just be like, nah, you know what I mean? But like most cases, one person secretly wants to be with the other person and they just being friends because that's all they can get. And so over time they start whatever. But like if you're in a situation where you're like, hey, we just friends then you just be friends. Like it's not, it's not hard. It just takes a different type of work. Uh, Christine, I've never done DoorDash. I did Instacart, but I've never done DoorDash. Uh, string snare. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'd ever want to be a life coach. Um, it's kind of, a, I don't even like the term. Um, respect to everyone who does it, but like, I, I, I mean, like I always said, I got nothing to, to tell anybody. You know what I mean, I'm, I'm seriously on that type of time. Like, I think all this stuff, I just, you know what I mean? These are just reminders. This is motivation, inspiration. Everybody already, already knows what they need to do or is on the path. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, just the idea of, of coaching someone through life seems weird to me. <laughs> like, no, I got, you know what I mean? Like we just, these are just reminders. Like we just, we just talk. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know if life coach would ever be something I wanted to do. Like, you know, I'm, I'm starting to do the one-on-one -on -one sessions where we can talk about anything. And if I do have something, some advice or something, yeah. But, um, and currently I haven't, I haven't been posting the link because I got to work some more things out. But, you know, they're, they're free currently because like I really don't, we're not using that as a revenue stream currently. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm. So, yeah, the ideal of charging someone to help them with their life, I don't know what would be me. I'm way behind on these comments. Hold on. Tommy White, I don't know if I would join a off-grid living community. You know, I'm pretty introverted. Unless it was one, like, I started with some really close friends. Maybe, yeah. Rosy Cat, Smoky Joe, what up, what up, what up? Hey, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the journey. Welcome to the community. You live in a cabin in the Sierras on 47 acres. 
Nice, nice, nice. Jealous, jealous. Uh, welcome. Another seasonal job other than housekeeping? I've always said I wanted to do like dishwashing. I don't know. I always said I wanted to try dishwashing, but I've never done it. <laughs> Tulsa, yeah, it'll wash it. Clogged toilet, it washes off. Oh, I wish I'd have been there. I love unclogging toilets. It's a skill. It's a skill. And once you've done a lot, you kind of learn. The secret is suction. The secret is suction. But like no one ever tells you that. People just think, put the thing in there. But the secret is like suction. Um, some of them are just bad, so it takes a while. But the, the secret is really like suction. Like you have to you have to visualize what the plunger is doing. Most people just stick the plunger in there. and It's like, no, you got to visualize, oh, the suction. You know, when I get a good seal and I'm pumping, I'm literally pumping the stuff through. Get a good seal, suck, and then pull. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love unclogging tons. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, Montana's where it's at, man. Ever since, like, that show Yellowstone, I feel like the population in Montana has been exploding. Uh, HRH, they don't they don't discuss this type of content in the school system because the school system is not designed for you to 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 to, to pump out, uh, you know, free thinking beings. The school system is not designed for you to come out of it and think for yourself. The school system is designed to teach you to think a certain way. It's designed to, to teach you to think the way that the people who set up the curriculum think. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, look at it this way. If I was to set up a public school system, I said, Tim, we're requiring you to set up a public school system. They would talk about all the things I believe in. Right. So you got to look at the other way. The people who set up the school system, they believe in society and the world being the way it is. That's what the curriculum is going to teach the kids to, to do. They want you to go to school. And the first thing you do is like, all right, hey, they want you to get more schooling. And then, then you take that after that, you career, you beat it the rest of your life. That's what the school system is designed for you to do. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I know lots of people went to school, went to college, got a good job, stayed there, whatever. I'm starting to know less and less people who do that. You know what I mean? But I'm like, I'm not, you know, knocking that business model. You know, my, my parent, my dad did that. You know what I mean? He gave me a great life. You know what I mean? So like, I'm not knocking that business model, but like, that's what school's designed to do. Because the people who make the curriculum, that's what they believe in. They There's really no reason for them to, to teach you how to have great relationships and manage money and like live free. That would bring the whole system down. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, they, they have no incentive to teach us all this stuff, you know? Great couple. Glad you like the channel. Glad it helps to calm your anxiety and depression. That, that's what we try to do. That's what we try to do. That guy from Texas in the building. Uh, our dog. I don't, I don't think I can settle in one place long term. No. Like, I'm already ready to leave Denver. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm good. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I, I can do a few months, a year, you know, whatever. But, like, yeah, I'll, I'll be ready to go. And even with it being somewhere for, like, a year or two, I got to be traveling with him. You know, I, I'm not really – like, what's the point in staying in one place? Like, I don't understand. I'm just a very nomadic soul, so I don't get it. Just like some people don't get – some people love staying in one place and never leave. they be like, what are you running from? Why are you always – just like they don't get me, I don't get them. You know what I mean? And that's cool. That's fine. Um, I just don't see the point in staying in one place. Like, you know, what's the point? You know? A great couple. I'm totally a minimalist. Yes. Yes. I don't talk about it a lot because it's just part of who I am. Uh, so it's just natural for me. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a minimalist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jacob, you did dishwashing at the YMCA. It wasn't bad. Cool.
simple mortgage, other streams of income, I would suggest outside of W-2. Um, I can't speak on any other than ones I've done, but like, you know, this gig work, I think is where it's at. You know what I mean? Like one, one of the places where it's at. There's so many different type of gig jobs now. Like, I feel like trying one out, you know what I mean? Try out a, a few, sign up, and you can sign up for them all for free. Like try one, try it out, you know? So I know gig work is a big one. A lot of people still against it. You know, I did Instacart, didn't think I, like I don't even grocery shop for myself, but I love doing Instacart for other people. Um, I mean, there's just so many, like I said, I can't really recommend any I haven't done. Uh, I do believe that like blogs are still possible, writing articles on the internet. I still, there's a, there's a website I use called hubpages.com. They still send me a check every month, even though I don't write much anymore, but it's still possible. You know, uh, I mean, the game is, bro, like you, the, the writing articles game is you literally say I wanted to write an article 25 ways to keep from paying rent ever again. I literally just have to Google the, I could literally Google that title 25 ways to never pay rent again, read 10 of the articles that pop up come up with a list of 25, write that article. You do it long enough, you'll learn about search engine op optimization, SEO, stuff like that. You do it long enough, you get good at it. Like you can make decent money. You know what I mean? Like it's just, there's there's so many, so many ways, so many ways. Um, but yeah, really, you know, unlike a lot of people who who constantly will, will pump out ways they'll tell you how to make money that they're not doing, you know, I'll talk about side hustles occasionally, but, uh, you know, I really can't recommend things that I haven't done. You know what I mean? But, I mean, there's so many ways to make money. these days. I would just put aside hour a day research. You know, other income streams, passive income streams, ways to make money online. There's so many ways out there now. Priya, pre, 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 I'll wait to get your name wrong. Priya, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad, I appreciate the love. I appreciate that continued support. Thank you. Definitely helps uh, to keep the motivation to keep streaming. So thank you. So it's quitting job without new and a waste of money. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, and and and, and that's, that goes back to like our thinking. You know, say it was a waste of money, but it's what you want it to do. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not a waste of money if, if it's what you want to do. If you've got some savings and you don't like your job right now, and you're like, I'm just going to quit, live off my savings till I find something new. Some people might be like, that was a waste of money. But if that's what you want to do, and it's your money, it's not a waste of money. You know what I mean? If you spend money the way you want to spend it, no one can tell you it's a waste. That's the way I look at it. So, like, that's one thing I learned when I used to quit jobs without another one. A, I had, like, the temp agencies on lock. So I was like, okay, on deck. So I'm like, all right, I can always go to temp agency. But B, I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to quit a job and not work for a month and then find the new one. People didn't get it, but I'm like, that's what I wanted to do. I sat at the house for a month and had a blast. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, I would, think, I would say it's a waste of money. Retired 2019, how you doing? The last film to move me emotionally, uh, Knucklehead. Um, what was that? Oh, it was. Dang, what was the name of it? It was about spies, female spies during World War II. What was it called? What was the name of that movie? I forget the name of it, but uh, it was about female spies in World War II, and there was a. It was. Uh, it was. It was in the UK. Um, and it's one of the girls, spoiler alert, um, ended up like getting caught and like tortured and, you know, um, you know, that that kind of moved me. And like at the end of the I always like at the end of the movies when they're showing like the funerals or at the end of the movie, they showed like, you know, this was based on a true story. And that actually happened to that to that girl. Um, and they said that she was awarded, like, I forget which French medal it was, but they were like, she was awarded that medal for, cause like she had the opportunity to go back home. Um, she decided to stay and keep spying and they awarded her one of the highest medals. Cause they, she refused to like leave one of the most dangerous posts in France or something like, just like all, stuff like that always chokes me up. Like when they posthum posthumously 
award somebody an award and like they something like that, like for defending her post. It's like stuff like that always gets me, man. Like, so yeah, that movie kind of got me. Like, I, I, I'm utmost respect for people who, in the face of, of death and everything, continue to do what they think is right. Uh, yeah, so that movie got me. Jessica, I see you. What's up, Jessica? He said, I think it's nice to stay in one place, have a sense of community, and have long-term friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, once again, respect. And and that is cool. But you, I know me, after about a year, I'm ready to move on. Like, I see it this way. Like, it was cool to be there, have that. But for me, I'm like, they'll always be my friends. I'm thinking about it this way. Yeah, but if I go somewhere else, I can find another community and even more friends. You know, but that's just me. I, I get that, that, you know, some people are like that. Um, I get that sometimes even if, even those of us who have nomadic souls hanker to be part of a community long term. Um, I get it, but I, I just don't think I could ever do it long term. You know, like it just after a couple of years, I got to go like there's stuff to see. But that's just me. You know, nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. We've had that discussion <laughs> several times, Jessica. <sighs> NFL games are terrible today. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, we here. We here. Hey, appreciate y'all hitting the like button. Thank y'all, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't done it already and you want to help us out, uh, that, that works. Yeah, 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 yeah. What kind of tech equipment do I use uh, living your best life? You mean as far as for like YouTube? Honestly, these days I just use mainly my iPhone. Like, And I got a, I got a little $100 Logitech webcam in my laptop I'm streaming from now. I got like a $30 light. I use to brighten up the, you know, uh, not much. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it don't take much to start a YouTube channel. You can use your iPhone and just good natural light and, and be good. O'Neal G, I, I don't think, you know, I don't worry about who's going to take care of me when I get old. Um, if I get old and there's nobody to take care of me, I guess I'll just die a little earlier than I would have. Like, I'll be blessed to get old. So if I get old and then, you know, I end up under a overpass in a cardboard box because there's nobody to take care of me. It is what it is. Like, I just really don't worry about it like that. You know, do I, you know, try to make financial, especially as a middle age now, I start thinking, OK, I'm going to start making some financial decisions that hopefully will will allow me to take care of myself when I'm older. But if the day comes in, like I can't. I mean, but here's the thing, too. Like, I don't who would take care of me now. If I got sick, it's the same. Like, it's the same now. Like, it's just me now. So, like, it's just not something I think about. Like, I do what I do. And if that day comes, well, like, if we got to check out early because there's nobody to take care of us, we check out early. Like, I just don't, it just don't bother. <laughs> like, it's just, you know what I mean? I mean? You know what I mean? Like, I just genuinely, I think as you lose your fear of death, things like that, you lose your fear of as well. You know what I mean? Like, what? I, I just, I don't, I'm like, I don't know, you know, but pe there's people with kids who, who have nobody to take care of them. The reason we have assisted living and nursing homes and all this other stuff is because people's kids, you know what I mean? So like having kids isn't a guarantee you'll be taken care of. So instead of spending all my life worrying about the five or 10 years, I might be old, you know, I just live, you know. E ticket, you took a year off. It was worth every penny. Nice, nice. A day, yeah. Settle down when you're dead. Nice. Little Bear, I appreciate those positive vibes. I'm accepting them, sending them back to you. Uh, There's snow. There's no snow in this area, retired 2019. I mean, up, up in the mountains, there's snow, but uh, it's actually clear down here. Jessica, you want a normal relationship? Uh, well, uh, but hey, hey, I get it. You want a normal relationship, not moving around. But like, I know a ton of people who very stable and like stay in one area and ain't got a normal relationship. So like, you know me, I look at it this way. I'm more likely to meet somebody if I move around more and I interact with more people. 
But I respect that. I get. I get. I respect that, Jessica. You know, I respect you. So I respect that. Like, I get it. I get it. It does kind of sound like you're trying to talk yourself into not. <laughs> I just, I'm messing with you, Jessica, because I know like you're like 50% nomadic too. Like you have a nomadic soul too. So that's why I like messing with you. <laughs> Cause I know you have that like both sides in you. Um, so, <laughs> but I, I do know. Yeah. You know, sometimes as we, as we not saying you're old at all, you're still very young, but sometimes as we get older, sometimes the other side of like, you know what? I just want to be in one place and meet somebody gains, you know, prominence. So I get that. I get that. But you know, I have to mess with you, Jessica. I, I, I mess with you because I care. <laughs> uh, Tobozu, I have, I have definitely visited uh, a Native American reservation where I worked in Glacier National Park. Uh, St. Mary's Resort is what it's called. It's right outside of Glacier. It's actually on the Blackfoot Native American reservation. So that was eye opening. Um, that was eye opening. Uh, you know, as, as you know, I'd driven through some before, but to spend some time actually on one and to interact with with some of the native peoples and like my boss was native and one of my really good friends I worked with was native. So to like, you know, have have more of a view of like their culture and then to be traveling back and forth, going to like, you know, different places on the reservation. It was very eye opening. Um, yeah, there there's. There's still a lot of work to be done. Like we, we, I know a lot of us say, oh, they got casinos. They're fine now. Okay. The greatest tragedy in American history is what happened to the Native Americans. Like to this day, it ain't right. So I'm glad, you know, I, just, I watched one episode of Yellowstone the other day, but I'm like, wow, I'm glad there's a, there's a show that's actually, you know, showing some of this stuff, you know? So yeah, 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 yeah. And all the Natives I met were super cool with me. Like, yeah, it was pretty cool. Are the hotel coffee makers clean? It depends on the housekeeper to clean the room. Like, I always, you know, kept my my coffee makers clean. But like, I mean, you got to think about it too. Depending on the type of coffee maker, like a lot of the, the 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 ones now, like, how do you clean them? You know what I mean? The ones now, mainly they'll be cups, and you put the cup under there, and you put, you know, so like those really. Do, if there's one that actually has like a a, co a coffee pot well then yeah like you want the coffee pot to be clean so like yeah they should have cleaned the coffee pot um but most of the ones now there's no coffee pot you just put a brand new cup under there and, and you know and you have the little packet so there's really nothing too clean you know there's really nothing too clean um the the area on the back back there where you pour the water like how do you you can't really clean that Honestly, you don't really want somebody cleaning that, right? Because it'll be like chemicals. So, like, there's really, the new coffee pots, there's really nothing to clean. You know? That being said, everything in a hotel room is dependent on whether the housekeeper cleaned it well, you know? So, Missy Moto, what up, what up, what up? Good to see you. Uh, how many national parks have I been to? Five, I think. Five? I mean, I would love to see them all. So I don't really have a list. Like if the opportunity comes up to visit one, I'm down. But I don't really have a list of those. But yeah, I think five. I'm a DoorDash man, uh, retired 2019. I'm a DoorDash man. I tried Uber Eats, Uber Eats once and I don't know, it just wasn't. I do love Uber. I just don't use Uber Eats. Angela, check it in. Our wonderful uh, moderator here on here on the Timothy Ward channel, Jessica. You know Acadia National Park is on my list, man. Well, dang, I just said I don't have a list, but like Acadia is one I want to see. Let me take that back. I don't really have a list, but Acadia is one I want to see because I want to go to Maine. So, like, I keep saying, if not this summer, next, like, I'm going, I'm gonna be in Maine, especially if you continue to be up there. Um, I'm I'm gonna be in Maine. Good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, I want to, I want to see me, especially if you're up there. You know, um, do things you love with people you love. So I got to get up there. If you can't tell, Jessica's one of my really good friends. Um, 
So we hung out in Myrtle Beach last year, beginning of this year. That was cool. Um, yeah, I do want to see the Redwoods. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that guy from Texas, they'll sell you another America Beautiful Pass, you know. Antonella, I don't really make New Year's resolutions. You know, I might, you know, there might be a couple of things. I'm like, it'd be cool to, it'd be cool to, cool to do this this year. But like, you know, I'm like, I want to, I want to go overseas this year in 2023. Excuse me. It's not really a resolution, but there's some things like I want to do this year. So, yeah. Uh, yes, retired 2019. Typically, um, it depends, but typically, you know, the, the food, the food isn't cold. You know what I mean? When they deliver it. Um, yeah, usually it, you, I mean, depend like, like, you know, if it's super busy, your food's probably going to get to you. It ain't going to be piping hot. You know what I mean? If it's eight at 8 PM, you know, it's 7 PM. Everybody's ordering food. It's going to take longer for the food to get there. They might have another stop before you. Um, but yeah, if it's like two in the afternoon and you order DoorDash, it's probably going to be, you know, 20 minutes to get there and then bring it right to you. So it just kind of depends. Have I been to, I've been through Cody, Wyoming, John. I've been through Cody. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. I, I, I drive through Wyoming. I've been through, drove through Wyoming a couple of different times. So I've been through, uh, I think I've been through Cody. Yeah. Um, 1984. I, I don't really find it. Like me and my family aren't really that close like that. Um, me and my dad are, but we're both like, as long as we see each other, honestly, like once in a decade, we're probably, fine. <laughs> I, I want to start seeing him more than that. But you know, as long as me and my dad see each other every couple of years, it'll be, you know, we're, we're cool. We talk on the phone a lot. We're fine. But we're very similar in that regard. Like, I don't, you know, we don't need to see each other in person. We talk on the phone every now and then. Um, and, you know, I try to make it a point to get to see my really good friends when I can. Like, I go back to Bozeman, see my friends there. So, I mean, you got social media, you got, you know, FaceTime. I'm not a need to be up your butt type of friend. So, like, no, I don't find it a challenge. Like, if I want, you know, if once a year I get to fly somewhere and hang out with some of my friends, I'm, I'm fine, you know, so. And if I go somewhere new and I make new friends, you know, I know eventually I'm going to leave and I'll have to fly back and visit them. So, no, you know, it's just it's just one of my priorities in life is to stay in contact with friends. So. Yeah, I, I don't need to. And I mean, it doesn't always like I said, I do a lot of leaving in life, so it's gotten easier. But sometimes it's still hard. When I left Bozeman, it, you know, it wasn't easy, you know, but I knew it was the move. But. You know what I mean? It was not easy to leave Bozeman. Like, but I just know it's who I am. So yeah, but you know, you just make it a priority to to visit friends and family when you can. Uh Little Florida, I do not celebrate Christmas. So yeah. I mean it's a you know, it's it's a it's a day, but you know, it's just like any other day with me. You know, I do like the fact that people seem to be a little nicer around Christmas. The Christmas lights are cool. You know, the churn seem a little happy because they get presents. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't celebrate Christmas, no. Um, to Bozu, I think in this day in general, this day and age in general, I think it's harder for people to make friends. Me, I, I usually make friends through like seasonal work. Like I'll work a seasonal job. I meet a ton of people. Um, that's how I do it. When, when I'm not working, I usually don't meet any new friends. But, like, I have – my thing is, like, I don't need a ton of friends. I got, like, two friends here. I'm That's enough. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't really need to make a lot of new friends, you know? So, I'm – other than through work, I really don't know how to make new friends. Like, Jim V, uh, I'd probably say – I don't know, maybe 10 people in my close friend circle, maybe. I don't know. Like, it depends, like, yeah, Ray Ray's the only. Like, Ray Ray is, that's my guy. Like, you know what I mean? But he, Ray Ray's family. You know what I mean? Like, Ray's, Ray's family. He calls me his son all the time. Like, Ray's family. So he's, 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 you know, he's transcended the friend circle. Like, Ray's family. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that, yeah, yeah. Um, 
but I don't know. Like I really haven't sat down and be like, oh, this person's a close friend. This person, you know what I mean? But like I, it's a small circle. It's a small circle, but like I'm blessed to have every one of them people in the circle, you know. So yeah, retired 2019. You've been to Bozeman. Bozeman's where it's at, man. Uh, Bear Claw, I'm, I'm not living out of my car. No, like I'm in my apartment, so no. Night Fighter said, I thought living near friends would make my life better, but instead I'm living in a higher cost of living area, struggling to find work, draining my emergency fund. Sorry to hear that. It, you know me, it happens. Like I find a lot of, this is what happens too, for some people. You'll move like... I know a lot of people who like live in one place and they got a ton of friends and they never see them. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know people who, you know, lived in the same area the whole life. They have all these friends. They never see them. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know what? It honestly works out. Like, I don't know. And some, I do know some people who do see their friends a lot, but I think sometimes like, you know, it doesn't always it's not always a foregone conclusion that if you live, if you stay in the same area close to people, you know, friends and family, that you're going to be happier. You know what I mean? Um, maybe that just means they need to try to get out there and be with those people more. But like, I don't know. Like for me, like I said, there's FaceTime, there's social media, there's the telephone. I do a lot of talking on the phone, you know what I mean, to, to, to people I care about. And so, like, for me, that's good. When I get to see them people once a year, like, it's amazing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, I think gas I saw yesterday was, like, two. It was, yeah, it was about 249 here, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crypto Johnny, when I make new friends, I like, it's usually organic. You know what I mean? Like, it's usually not like one of us walks up like, hey, you want to be friends? It's usually like organic. Like you work with somebody, you start talking. Um, somebody says, oh, I'm going to go do Hey, you want to go grab a coffee? Like, you know what I mean? Like, or you just start, you sit down and eat at the table. One of the things I love about seasonal work is a lot of them have employee dining rooms, EDRs. Um, so you, and you go to lunch at the same time as everybody else in your department. So you end up like, it's like high school, you know what I mean? You end up going to, going to the cafeteria together. So somebody, Hey, somebody sitting there. Nah, you eating, you start talking, you just make friends. Like it, it typically happens organically. Like I don't really like, Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that person my friend. That sounds kind of creepy. Um, it usually just happens organically, you know? Tiffany says, I don't have any close friends and I love it. <laughs> nice. Nice. John says, most of my closest friends are long distance relationships. Keep my social circle small, just easier for me. I think that's the way to do it, man. I think, what's up, I am gold? Uh, you're only going to have, you know what I mean, so many really good friends in life. Like, and then you might have a, a bigger circle of, you know, acquaintances, people you cool with. But like, it doesn't, even the two of those circles combined, you're not going to have more than like, 10 people bro like really you know 10 15 people like you just you know you just don't have time to have that many friends especially as you get older i think okay Asheville, north carolina okay okay Hey, what's up, Guy Rins? Appreciate you taking the time to, to say what's up. Hope hope you uh, feel better. Hope your emotions get, you know, where you want them to be. I'm taking that love, accepting it, sending it right back to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know, when, when you don't live around your friends, it's, it's, it's super special when you get to see them. Super special when you get to see them, you know. Uh, to Bozu, I, I have no clue which state has the best barbecue. Um, that would mean I would have to have gone to every southern state and eaten barbecue. And like, I don't really, you know me. I'm a, I'm about some chicken wings. So yeah, yeah, I have no clue. You y'all know any question that's like, what has the best whatever? It, I'm gonna not answer. Like I, I just yeah, you already know. The, the, anything? What's the best? This? Well, I don't answer. Like I don't rank. Um, you know what I mean? Like I just I you know I just be I just do whatever. Um, yeah, I, mean, I just 
I just, you know. Not to mention everybody's going to think a different state has it. If I'm like, oh, obviously Florida, a million people are going to be like, no, which I think a lot of times that's what people want is the discussion. Um, but yeah, I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Simply Morgans, I have no plans to relocate to the South. No, no. Shout out to the South. I just, I did my time there. You know what I mean? Like I, I did my time there. Um, I'm good. I'm good. I mean, maybe in the future, who knows? But uh, as of now, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You, uh, things are just different there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this part of the country. So, yeah. My top three values, uh, once again, I don't really rank things. Um, I'm big on honesty. <clears throat> you know, I'm big on loyalty. Really, which I feel like, yeah, are those listening? Yeah, honesty and loyalty are big. I'll say that. Brome by nature. I like all the Timothys. You know what I mean? Tim in his 20s was 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 Tim in his 20s. Tim in his, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I like all the versions. You know, I'm just here experiencing what it's like to be a human on this planet. You know, Timothy Ward is like my avatar. You know, the energy that makes up my consciousness is currently inhabiting this body we call Timothy Ward. So I like all incarnations and, and, and decades and time periods because it was all new experiences. I'd never been a 20-year-old before. As far as I know, you know what I mean? I'd never been 20 year old Timothy Ward before. So experiencing that was cool. Experiencing 30 year old, 40 year old, 50 year old. So you know what I mean like it, it's not a, a pick and choose. Oh, I like it's all one big experience. Like I love it all. Yeah, I'm excited to see 70. Uh, I'm excited to see <laughs> as long as I'm in this body, I'm, I'm going to hopefully be excited to experience it, you know? So yeah, there's really no picking and choosing like you know we, we got a lot of fun that's 20, 20 year old too we got a lot of fun but like we got a lot more wisdom now you know what i mean you know Blaine 88 thank you happy holidays to you as well um i don't celebrate none of them but i i, I still you know want them to be happy for everybody yeah i was gonna say 70 year old tim but i'm like yeah no, seventy. I'm gonna be. My life's gonna be amazing at seventy. I might live to be like eighty. I know me. I, I'll, I'll, I'll end up. <laughs> like the universe has a sense of humor, so however long I live, or don't live, it's gonna be like funny. It's gonna be messing with me. I already know. I already know. I'm gonna be laughing as I die. I already know. I'm like, this is how it happened. Wow. Like I'm, I'm telling you, I'm gonna be laughing. Oh, so I might be like ninety five years old. Like really, universe? Why? Why? Ain't it time for me to move on? It's going to be like, nope. <laughs> I'm telling you. I know. I already know. I already know. I'm going to be laughing no matter what it is. Uh, retired 2019. If I don't have nothing going on, yeah, I'll, I'll do a Christmas live stream. Angela's wanting a little Barbie, a little BBQ right now. Hey, me and my boy, me and my boy Roosevelt, uh, we did some hiking. We went up to, to uh, Roxboro State Park. We went up to Red Rocks, uh, me and his wife. Uh, and then we said, all right, it's time to eat. So he's going to go get some barbecue. And, like, I don't know no barbecue places, so they just, like, found one. It was the swankiest, hipsterist. And, you know, no disrespect to my swingy hipsters, but we just drove right past it. We just drove right past it. Like it was it was in like just a newly gentrified uh, area that had been gentrified in like the past five years. You know, a newly gentrified, very like hipster swanky. Like, you know, I need a barbecue place where I can have barbecue all over my face. I could drop food on the floor. Nobody say nothing. This was definitely a barbecue place where you ate ribs with a fork and knife. You know what I mean? It was one of them. We just kept going. I said, nah, player, that ain't even. I was like, that ain't even our type of place. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was crazy. It was crazy. Which meant we had to drive another damn near hour to get to Ruby Tuesdays near where they were staying. But it, yeah, I would I would I would have rather stayed hungry 
and went to the Ruby Tuesdays and went to that place because I would have felt totally out of place. Like, it's not my place. Swanky. Not swingy, swanky. Um, I don't even know if that's a word. I'm, it's a word today. Chilling and killing lives for barbecue meats. Pause. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy bougie. Like, respect to the bougie people. Like, if that's how you get down, cool. Like, I ain't hating. But it just wasn't, nah. Nah, player. Yeah, I went to Ruby Tuesdays, had the salad bar and some wings. It was, they was laughing at me because I eat so fast. Bro always laughs at me. He don't say nothing. He just be over there laughing at me. Because like, he's, man, you like you in prison because I just eat. But I'm, that's, you know, doing long maintenance. And I've always had jobs. I have always had time sensitive jobs. I realize this about me. I'm like, law maintenance, very time sensitive. I work for UPS, FedEx, definitely time sensitive. Uh, housekeeping, time sensitive. I'm always time sensitive. Like, I've always had time sensitive jobs. Time sensitive jobs means you eat when you can. You hear me? Some days you can't really stop for lunch. You just got to eat in the truck or, you know, law uh, 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 housekeeping. A lot of times I just run downstairs to the vending machine, get something, run up back to the rooms, eat while I'm cleaning. Like, so I always eat fast. Now, if we, you know, coffee time, if I'm, I go out for coffee, you take your time. You, say, you know, when I'm eating, it's like doing, like I eat to get back to doing something else. Always done that. Um, so, yeah, he'd be over there laughing. I'd be like, bro, like, really? I'm just like, man, I don't, like, in my mind, eating is a chore you get done so you can get back to doing what you do. Just, that's why, like, I'm not a foodie. Like, you need to savor your food. I'm like, I savor it quickly. You, you, they, you eat standing up to Bozo. Yeah, people don't. People who don't get it don't get it, and I, I'm I'm kind of glad they don't get it. I wish I did. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't mind eating fast, but part of me is like, dang, what if, what if you would learn to eat slow and savor your food? But like I, I savor it quickly. You know what I mean? I just don't. It tastes good. I just eat it quick. Uh, Jim V, we used to we used to mow a lot of grass. We used to, but we used to do a lot of like big properties and stuff too. But I promise you, uh, when I worked in in Gainesville, we we mowed more grass than anybody else in a day. Bro, we 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 mowed a lot of grass. Like when I would look at like other lawn companies and talk with people, and they tell me what they did, or like I'd go work. I worked for one other one, I think. These dudes wasted a lot of time. We mowed a lot when I worked for. Yeah, shout out to my, my, my boy John. When I work, man, we mowed a lot of grass, brother. Like, people would come work for us and quit day one. They quit hour. Like, people would pass out. They they be they fall down. Like, we just we went. We worked. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Jonathan, I'm with you. I enjoy my food fast. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I can't. Yeah, like it, it. It would be a chore for me to eat slowly. I'd have to be like mm, force yourself. Tobozu, uh, lawn care and landscaping is good exercise. Like, it's definitely harder than most people think. Like, I, I didn't see so many people be like, nah, this is too much. I ain't doing this. Yeah, Michael, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a, my plan is to do a seasonal job this summer. Yeah, like, like I was saying earlier, I like that balance of freedom. But also sometimes I want to be a part of something. I want to be around people. So I think this summer I'm working a seasonal job. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think in Gainesville we had Bermuda. Um, I think we had some Zoysia, St. Augustine. Like down there, you could have a, a, a centipede. You know, there was a bunch of different types down there. Down in Florida, like... Yeah, pretty much any type of grass, you know what I mean, can, can do well in Florida if watered properly. You know, yeah, we had zoysia, Bermuda, centipede, you know, we had lots of different grass on there. Pretty much all the types, a lot of, well, that's not all the types, but you could put a grass down there and you water it right. It's going, if, if, if it's heat tolerant, you know, that's the only thing. Like, you have to worry about the heat because um, there's no, it's not really like cold. You know, um, but yeah, it just had to be heat tolerant. So you water it right. You could put like pretty much any grass down there. 
Yeah, but that that Zoysia looks good though. You got to have them sharp blades, but it looks good when you cut it, though. We used to change our blades midday. John would be like, all right, change the blades. That was something that, like, I'd never done before. Like, we used to change blades. That's how much grass we was cutting. We used to change blades at the end of the day every day. Sometimes not even every day. John would have us mid, in the middle of the day, he'd be like, change the blades. And I got, like, and I was used to changing blades with, like, a, a electric drill. Uh, not a lot. Yeah, electric drill. John had us by hand changing them blades, middle of the day, floor to sun. And like, you didn't take forever either. Like literally you had about five minutes between like mower, mower off the truck, blades change, cutting grass. Like it, we tell you, man, I, I, I learned to, to mow with him. Like I've mowed grass before and worked hard, but in Gainesville, I learned to mow grass. Like, yeah. Johnny, I have seen poison ivy, poison oak, poison sumac. I've had poison ivy, poison oak. I've I've seen it in the hat all. Bruh. Yeah. I didn't have poison ivy so bad. Like I had to get the steroids. Like it was all over my body. And when I say all over my body, I mean all over my body. Think of the most sensitive reasons you can think of. I had poison ivy there. Like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't been in the in the ivy. Trust. Trust. Uh one of the things I do not miss about Florida. Is yeah, that poison ivy. But like, honestly, unless it got to the point where like, unless it was really bad, it didn't bother me. You know, when when I'd get into a really bad, and you learn how to like, you know, I started wearing long sleeves every day, and I wear gloves whenever I'm in the, you know, in the woods. Like, you learn how to a couple of them big bouts with it. When you covered in it for a week or two, you learn to how to, you know, not get in it. And, you know, you get little small stuff. That's nothing. Plus, you can once I learn you can scratch it and it doesn't matter, it wasn't as bad because you can just scratch it. Like when I first would get it, I thought I had to just like I'd lay in bed like, oh, I can't. But once I learned I could scratch it, like it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, like it doesn't. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't had I, I can honestly say I probably have poison ivy more than 90 percent of people on the planet. Like I didn't add much for my fair share. Simi, I do not budget and in, in in save for my trips uh, specifically. No. Nah. I just, like I said, I'm always saving. So if a trip comes up and I feel like it's a, it's a good deal or something I really want to do, I just take it. You know, that goes back to the doing what you love, what people you love. Like, I, I, I've stopped being as cheap and be like, oh, I really want to do that, but it costs too much. It's like, if I got the money to do it and I really want to do it, I'm going to do it. Like, we'll figure the money out later. Life over money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, experiences over money. Oh, I like that. EOM. Experiences over money. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of save in general. And then, you know, I take I take the trips that I want to take. The, the issue for me a lot of times is, is finding a trip to take that feels right. You know, which is part of the reason I'm like, you know, I want to get a travel partner because then their input could help as well. Because sometimes I just don't have a feeling, you know what I mean? That, that's what was that's what was a big thing like these past couple of years. Well, like especially like say like 2021 and even this year, this year, like I just haven't been like things just weren't. I wasn't getting that. Yes, do that. And so I was just kind of like doing a little stagnating when I could have been traveling more because I wasn't getting that do it um so yeah that's a lot of times the issue for me i'm just i'll be i'll sit on google flights for hours booking.com for hours putting trips together and then i'll be like but do i really want to do that so that's another area where it's like oh wait where's somewhere i could go where there's somebody i know because somebody i can really care about i should go there. you know i'm trying to incorporate that into my travel as well Ricky, I don't know if I've ever felt betrayed. I've had people do some stuff that I was like, all right, good to know. I don't know. I'm sure I have, but I can't. I probably just dismissed it. But, eh, you know, there's been times when I'm like, good to know that that person, that's how they are, you know. Angela, I appreciate you asking people hit the like button. Thank you. Thank you. It's totally free, folks. Hitting the like button. Don't look Ricky. Uh, Alvin, uh, I don't really like letting my hair grow because you can see my hairline's kind of weird. So, I, yeah, I prefer, you know, yeah, it's just easier to just cut it bald. Like, 
I don't know what the benefit of having a lot of hair would be. Even if my hair was, even if my hair wasn't, you know, like that. Even if I had like a straight hairline, like what would be the point of letting my hair grow? Like, y'all know me. I don't even. I'll let my beard grow and then I cut it off. <laughs> uh, oh, here's a question: What was my last soul food? Uh, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't. I'd be. I'd be eating chicken wings, man. I'd be. I'm not a big. You know. Hey, Kalen, thank you, thank you, thank you. Kalen, I appreciate that love. Super Chat Squad, thank you. Really appreciate that. He says, as someone who feels completely lost in life, your videos have helped. Thank you. You're welcome. Glad they could help. And yeah, I def definitely recommend the thought process of do what you love with people you love. And the ideal of like, if you can find something to do that hits both of them, cool. But if not, one of them. I don't really know what I want to do right now. Who are some people I really care about? Let me go spend some time with grandma. You know what I mean? Like, let me go spend some time with someone who I haven't seen in, in, in years. Or what's something I really like doing? I'm going to do that. Something I really like doing I haven't done in a while. Let me do that. Even something as radical as like, hey, what's something I really like to do? Is there any way I could, you know, find a way to make that what I do in life? You know what I mean? Um, I used to say, like, turn your passion, see if you could turn your passion into a business. I don't say that anymore. Um, but if there's a way that you could turn your passion into like a money-making scheme so you don't have to work, you know, I know you, people are like, oh, that's the same thing. No, it's not. It's, it's slightly different. Um, cause if you say I turned my passion into a business, that's powerful. You start thinking about it as a business, but if you just say it's my passion and it also makes me some money, your brain sees, your brain interprets those totally different. Like I used to say, oh, my YouTube channel is a business. I don't say that anymore. YouTube is a passion. And it just happens to make me money. My brain interprets that totally different than when I was like, YouTube is a business. Because then you start like making business decisions. I don't want to make business decisions with my passion. I just roll with my passion. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. But do what you love with, with, with who you love. I think that's a good compass. And I think that will usually route you. We're, it, it, it worst case scenario, it'll just distract you long enough until you find a route you want to take in life. But I think a lot of times that can lead you to what you want to do in life. Because at the end of the day, that's really all we want to do is like enjoy life, you know. So appreciate that Super Chat Squad. I really appreciate that, Kaylin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I I don't have any secret talents, Ricky. No, I, I'm not. No. Trust me, if I got talents, I'd have been and told y'all about them to, you know, fill some time <laughs> to make the live stream interesting, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Lek, is that how you say it? L-E-C? Lek, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you saying that. It's an excellent positive. Uh, Excellent, positive advice. This is your platform. You deserve all the blessings. Thank you. Thank you. GMAC 101. Thank you as well. It's a very simple but very practical advice. As always, Mr. Tim. Hey, we try. We try. We try. Uh, KBUS. Yes, I, I have definitely been heartbroken before. Yes. Yes. Uh, and my answer is always the same. Time is the only way to get over it. Like there's no, if there was a secret sauce or formula for getting over heartbreak, whoever came up with it would be Richard and Bezos. You know what I mean? Like it's just time. There's no, you know, you can do things to like distract yourself while it's, you know, um, you know, until the time passes, but time is the only, the only way to get over heartbreak, heartbreak. Like what do you mean? There's no, yeah. So just time, just time. I mean, that sucks when you're going through it. It sucks when you're going through it, but like, it's just time, you know, you got to get over that person, that heartbreak. Which is good to know. Cause like, oh, in the moment it feels horrible and oh, life's over and all this, you're crying, curled up crying on the fetal position. You don't get out of bed for weeks. I'm talking about me or for days, you know, you ain't trying to talk to nobody. Don't want to see nobody, but it's good to know like, okay, a month from now or whatever, I won't feel like this, you know, so, but it's just time. 
Uh, Kiki, no. When, when I, when I uh, you know, reset my life and, and, and got on the path I'm on now, uh, I had a thousand bucks in the bank and my buddy Ray Ray gave me 250 bucks. About a couple months into it, my buddy Ray gave me 250 bucks. So I had twelve one thousand two hundred fifty dollars Yeah, so yeah, didn't save a bunch of money. And that was why it was like, you know, if, if this, if this, if this don't work out, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I knew I had people I could come back and stay with and get back on my feet. But I'm like, if this don't work out, it's going. But I was like, hey, even that'll be an adventure. Getting back on my feet, you know. But yeah, we definitely didn't have a lot of money saved up. Um, has heartbreak ever made me bitter? I feel like there was a time in my life when, yes, you know, I, I was bitter and I, and I would, why is this happening to me? You know, I would think like, why is this happening to me? Oh, life sucks, that type of stuff. Not just heartbreak, but anything that happened to me. You know, a lot of bad things that happened to me. I'm like, oh, woe is me. Why is life doing it to me? I hate life. Um, these days I just look at it as, yes, yeah, painful, but like, this is, this is the game, you know, the price you pay for falling in love with someone and giving your heart to someone is that it they could break it. it you know what I mean? Or you could break theirs and then they break up with you. You know what I mean? So like the, the price you pay for experiencing love is the loss of love. So like, and even if that person, I try to be a hundred percent accountable. So even if that person did something wrong to me or they ended the relationship, I was the one who got in a relationship with them. So like, Maybe I should have been more discerning, you know? Yeah, so like I don't, there's there's no one or nothing to be bitter at now. It's just life. I make decisions and sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they work out for a certain amount of time and then it's over. So there's no one to be bitter with. There's nothing to be bitter at. It's just life. In this universe, on this planet, love don't always last. But there is love. So, you know what I mean? Like, we could live loveless lives. So the fact that you find someone to love for any period of time is, is a blessing, you know? So that's why I try to look at it now. Alvin, I do have some very close friends. Yes, blessed to have some very close friends. Yes. Sharon says, Tim, thank you. You're welcome. You will never, ever know how much acceptance you've given me. Yes. Yes, uh, you've taught me the, the meaning of the serenity prayer. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, um, I'm glad, Sharon. Thank you. I mean, yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, and that's, yeah, that's, i tell you, comments like that, thank you. Thank you. I don't always know what to say to convey how much the kind words mean to me, but trust me, it, it you know, yeah. So thank you, Sharon. And you're welcome. Uh, Chandra, me, me and there's love between my mom and, and my siblings, but uh, we have some differing spiritual views, so they don't really talk to me that much. But uh, I actually talked to my sister the other day, so that was cool. But uh, yeah, we don't we don't see each other much. We don't talk too much, but it's it's all love. I love them. They love me, and I respect their re religious beliefs. So like, it is what it is, you know. I used to be bitter over that, but then I got a little older and I grew and I realized that like, I have my beliefs and views, they have theirs. Like I can't, you know, uh, anybody who, who stands by a set of beliefs, I, I, I respect. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, I did not see the Atlanta show in Las Vegas. No, I saw Blue Man Group in Vegas once. Kiki, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad. Super Chat Squad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kiki, I pre Kiki Fries. Appreciate <laughs> That's funny. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Super Chat Squad. Thank you for, appreciate the love. Thank you. Uh, Michael, I was raised a Jehovah's Witness. So, yeah. Yeah, Tobozu, it, it's, I have to say that in the beginning, yeah, I, I didn't see it the way I see it now. Um, in the beginning, I felt kicked to the curve for not really doing anything. I'm like, dang, just for like having sex, like my whole, my whole family don't kick it with me no more. But 
one of the things that that has allowed me to not only I feel like you know it's crazy like my I feel like my my connection with the divine is is just as great if not greater now um than it ever was and one of the things that helped me to do that is that life has given me some truly amazing people in lieu not I don't want to say in lieu of the family members who don't kick it with me but kind of you know what I mean you know, so like, yeah, I would like to kick it with them more, but I got people that want me in their life. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, and who have the same kind of views as me, or even when they don't have the same views as me, we get along. You know what I mean? So like, I, I focus on that more now because I'm like, man, I could be not really kicking it with them and also have nobody else. And I'm like, man, like I can't, you know what I mean? Like I'm learning to, I don't pick and choose the love in life. You know what I mean? I'm just blessed to have love in my life and really good friends. You know what I mean? So, and people I consider family. So, you know, that has helped me to lose some of that bitterness is once again, gratitude. Gratitude is so powerful, man. Anytime, you know, I find myself down in the woe is me and all that. I just go to gratitude. I just go, I just take it to gratitude, you know, and it, it helps. And it also helps me, once again, you know, when you're grateful, you're more empathetic. So sometimes I'm like, wow, do I know any people who don't really have a family situation that maybe I can be one of those people to them? You know, that's one of the things um, I do kind of want to get back into seasonal work, specifically like leadership, because I know a lot of people come to seasonal jobs, especially a lot of the younger uh, kids, uh, younger, I shouldn't call them kids, but like the younger people in like their 20s, late teens, 20s. They don't have the best family situation, some of them. So I'm like, I want to get back into seasonal work, some and leadership. So like I can be there for, you know what I mean? I know I've stopped them. so many people. Hey, what are you going to do when you leave here? They're like, well, I don't really want to go home. My home life ain't really, you know what I mean? I want to be able to set up a situation so that like they know, hey, this is a place I can go year after year. It's like family there. They got me. If nothing else, I know I can go to this place for, you know, whatever winter season, summer season, and I feel part of something. I feel at home, you know, because some people don't have that. So, you know, gratitude makes me more empathetic and then changes some of my actions. So I'm like, yeah, when I'm thinking along those lines, I ain't got no time to be worried about, like, who don't talk to me anymore. You know what I mean? Shout out to the newbies and lurkers. Lurkers is not a negative term. Um, we always say shout out to the lurkers because like, you know what I mean? Like some people, like I lurk all the time. When I go on other people's live streams, I always lurk. I always lurk. You rarely see Tim comment. Like I'm going to tell you how much I lurk. When I super chat, I don't even do it with my, <laughs> I super chat from my, from my, from my, from my burner channel. From my burner channel. I see you only super chat from this channel. I'll be heavy lurking. I'll log into my burner channel and send some money. And <laughs> I'll be heavy lurking. You won't even know. I might like, later if I see you, but like, yeah, I was on your stream, but rarely the you'll never see Tim. I'll be heavy lurking. Hey, Tabozu, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super chat squad. Thank you, thank you. And you're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you. Thank you. I don't know what the what a dark night of the soul is, Michael. Um, I, I didn't go to college. A lot of this stuff I don't know what it. I'm not educated. A lot of this stuff I don't know. You know. Hey, O'Neill. I will say this as someone who's raised a Jehovah's Witness. I do not feel like I missed out on the holidays at all. I got no reason to lie. Was it rough sometimes when like? Everybody came back to school after the after the holidays and had new stuff. Yeah. But, you know, eventually, as I got older, I could voice this to my parents. And when I start making money, I just would, you know, it got to the point where, like, mom would save some school clothes money or whatever. And, like, I'd get a new outfit over the Christmas holidays, you know, just so I had something new. Or when I start making money, um, I would buy some some new clothes, but like honestly, I, I got no reason to lie. 
I do not feel like I missed out not celebrate holidays because my parents still bought me stuff. Here's the thing. It was so cool when my parents bought me stuff because I wasn't expecting it. I would just come home on a random Thursday and mom would have bought me some. Dad would have bought me some. You know what I mean? Like, and it was so special because it wasn't like, oh, it's the holidays. I didn't grow up expecting stuff. You know what I mean? I didn't grow up expecting anything. Like, yeah, when school started, they would buy me new school clothes because they had to. But like, it was like when something wore out, you got something new. But beyond that, I never expected anything. And once again, that made me, I felt so loved. You know what I mean? Because I just come home on a random Thursday. Mom bought me some new Legos. Dad bought me whatever, like a new a new baseball mat. Hey, we're going to go out in the backyard, throw the, throw the, whatever. A new computer program. You know, or dad is like, hey, I got a new computer. You can, Here's my old one. You can use it now. This one's your computer now. Like stuff like that made me feel so loved. Because I wasn't expecting it. And so I honestly, like, I never, you know, as a kid, you're like, man, everybody got, but like, I never grew up like, man, I wish I could have celebrated holidays. I didn't miss out on nothing. Like, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, so it seems that way on the outside looking in, like, oh, you're depriving your kids. But like, it's not that way. It real. I wouldn't lie. If I felt that way, oh, I'd tell you. But like, I never felt deprived. Like, I still had stuff. Like, I, I think it's weird that we've set up a society that, has designated, these are the days you give your kids stuff. You gonna tell me when to give my, you know what I mean? I don't know. That's just the way I look at it. Um, so yeah, I never felt deprived, bro. Like I, 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 I would not change anything in my childhood for nothing. I can stare in the camera and say that I would not change anything in my childhood for nothing. Cause like, I feel like it gave me a different view of the world. Uh, Crypto Johnny, sometimes I'll share my videos on other platforms, but it really doesn't, it really doesn't, uh, hold on a few seconds. <laughs> Hang on two seconds, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what was we talking about? Yeah, it really doesn't do much for the videos when I share them. So, like, I, I think it does more when other people share them. Like, if I share it, I'm really just sharing it to people who already know about me. Like if I share a video on Twitter, I'm just sharing it with people who already follow me. So like I just let other people do the sharing, which I really appreciate when other people share. Facts, Angela. Receiving stuff does not make the holiday. It's just spending time with friends and family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Road Dog Fifty. I see myself in five years, hopefully doing the exact same thing I'm doing now. Like, I just want to travel, do my little YouTube thing. Do what I love, what people I love. Um, I'll feel so blessed if five years from now I'm living exactly the same life. Yeah. Uh, Queen Butterfly. I I I I I don't plan on ever getting married. So, I it, it honestly it would not bother me in the slightest bit if I don't I don't know about marriage marriage venues. I if I was to ever get married, I would. Part of the stipulation would be like, don't ask me nothing about where we're getting married. You do the whole wedding. Tell me what to wear and when to be there. And how many best men I need to pick. So, yeah, I don't I have no clue. what would, I, I, I don't really know. Yeah. Night fighter. When I look for seasonal jobs, uh, I usually work in housekeeping. So I like to work in housekeeping at a place that has employee housing, preferably where I can get my own room. Um, and preferably that like has meals, you know, so, but you know, I like it, you know, nice area, good scenery. Uh, Eric, I, I don't, I've thought about living outside the U S and I do want to start transitioning towards spending more time out of the U S like that's one of my next steps. But I don't know if I want to live permanently out the country. Like, 
It's just that thought hasn't hit me yet where I'm like, I just want to move and live, leave the, like I would, you know, if I went somewhere for two months, came home for a little bit, went somewhere else for two, something like that. Yeah. Maybe half the year out the country, but I don't know if currently I want to totally move, but yeah. Um, I think more and more people, once they discover the low cost of living in other countries, I think we're going to see a mass exodus from the U S I think it's coming. Part of the reason I want to start being out the country more so I can, be telling more people about, hey, you can go here, it's cheap, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Richard, uh, I have no desire to buy a house. None. None. Like, I don't I don't stay somewhere long, like a 30-year mortgage, 20 years. Like, I don't want to, you know what I mean? Like, I have no, it's just, I have no desire to stay anywhere long term. And then people always say, well, you can buy a house and rent it out. That's just too much work. Like, it just, it, buying a house doesn't fit my lifestyle. Like, I'm content to rent till the day I die. I'm fine. I don't need the equity. Like, I don't need the investment. Like, I'm good. Yeah. So, but that's just me. Um, I don't have anything in my life that I need a house for. You know? Um, I don't have any kids. You know what I mean? So, like, well, I've always said, uh, I want to get some land. And I could see throwing a little shed on it or something and converting, you know, having a, a dwelling space in it, you know, just like a, a studio, just a bed, a bathroom and a kitchen. So like when there's times where I don't want to be on the road, I can just be there just knowing I have that fallback position. But as far as like buying like a real house, you know, nah, nah, like I just don't. Yeah. Yeah, Eric, I, I trust me. The whole time I was in Thailand, I was like, bro, I've been trying to ball out in the wrong country. Like, it's, you know, like I know those places are so much cheaper. And I do want to start visiting all those places and, and really learning that game. But like, you know, I, I feel like a, a big portion of my ministry is in America. You know what I mean? So I almost feel like if I was to totally leave, I couldn't get the message out there the same way as if I'm here. I feel like for, for my ministry, my message in and out the country is the move, you know. Yeah, Christopher, I, I know that the motels and the extended stays and the Airbnbs, they can get expensive. They can eat your savings up. I've been there. Uh Craigslist is a good place to look, which Airbnb is a good option. Um, you can if you if you do off-season Airbnb. For example, right now you can get a cheap Airbnb if you stay for a month in like Myrtle Beach because ain't nobody there. Um, it's or like yeah, January. Maybe the people there now because it's, it's Christmas, but um, it's it's the off season, so you can play the off season Airbnb game and get some good deals. But you know, uh, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, live in your car. You know, that's an option. Uh, Road Dog 50, I have to disagree. I know tons of, of women that are minimalist. I know tons of women that are minimalist. And I feel like they want relationships just as much as like normal women. Some of them do, some of them don't, just like normal women. I feel like we, just, just from my experience, maybe from your experience, that's true. So I don't want to, but from my experience, people are people. They have the same hopes and dreams and thoughts about relationships, whether they're minimalist, not a minimalist, like, you know, it's 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 all about the same game, um, and I and I definitely never want to speak for another gender or another group of people. From what I've seen, I know a ton of women that are minimalist, and a lot of them got boyfriends, a lot of them dating girl. They got girlfriends, you know what I mean? Like, oh, uh, maybe that's just because I run across more of them in my lifestyle than the average person. But like, yeah, like it's just. You know, as a minimalist, is it harder to find someone in the real world today? As a nomad minimalist, is it harder to find someone in the real world today? Probably. But like when I kick it with my peoples, it's, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm what they're looking for. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah, Corey Cummins, I, don't, I wouldn't get a mobile home because that's too expensive. Mobile homes are expensive. I'm not trying to, uh, when I say Home Depot shed, I'm trying to spend like 10 grand. Okay, 15 grand. Max 20. 
to have the whole thing done, to get water, power, get the shed put there, you know, get everything, you know, uh, insulated and plumbed and all. I'm trying to spend like 20 grand for the whole thing. You can't get some new land and get a mobile home dropped on it for 20 grand. So, yeah, I don't a mobile homes like a house. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, I just, you know, a little shed. If, if I can get the whole situation for 17 grand, I'm happy. Like, I'm trying to do it that cheap. Hang on one second. Yeah, so yeah. Happy mama, exactly. That that's my whole message, you know. Uh trying to do the opposite. You said you're tired of our society, the way we're currently running it, trying to convince people everyone needs to live their lives in a specific way. That's my whole message. I'm I'm trying to convince people to live life they the way they want to live it. Don't listen to nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Live it the way you want to live it. Like that's where I'm at with it, you know. I crypto Johnny, I I don't like the idea of renting my place to people. Like that's yeah, that's that you know I mean like I just don't it's I don't like hassle. I don't like hassle. I, happy mama, exactly. Tell people this all the time. You said everyone, all caps, can contribute to society civilization. If we allow people to do them and follow their own destiny, we would all be better off and more joyous if we did. I say this all the time. Thank you. Thank you. I love that comment. Thank you. I say this all the time because people are always like, well, if everybody did what they wanted to do, then there would be certain jobs nobody would do. Blah, blah. I'm like, no, we could have all the same jobs, just we would pick the jobs we loved. Actually, we, society would probably be set up different. Maybe we wouldn't have some of the jobs, but we would set up society to not have those jobs. But it would work out that everyone was doing something they wanted to do. We might have the same exact jobs, but work would be different and everybody would be happy at work. Like it just, I don't understand why people don't get that. We're, we're so programmed to believe that like, oh, things have to be this way or it won't work. Bro, we would just, feel, someone's like, oh, if we start doing that, society would collapse. Yes. And then we would build it back up properly. This whole idea, oh, it has to be this way or it's wrong is crazy to me. Thank you, happy mama. Thank you. You here. You here. Oh, that's my buddy Roosevelt, my good friend that I was telling you I was in town. Even he's texting me. Alvin, I've never been to a massage parlor. No, um, there was one in Thailand. I, 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 I thought about going to. I was eating. I was eating. Uh, I was eating lunch one day. I was eating lunch in a very like expat place. Like there was nothing but like Australians and Americans and stuff in there. Um, but there was a massage parlor across the street, and I was. And then one of them girls was. Whoo, I was like, I'm gonna go get me a massage. But like, I was like, no, I don't wanna go in there and then like have to explain, I just want a massage. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I don't wanna go in there and they, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, I really just want a massage. And I was like, nah, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. Nah, like, I don't try to, I ain't gonna do it, but she was fine. Um, I don't know, Eric. I don't know if it's impossible to do the shed for 20 grand. I'm gonna make it happen. I can make it happen. Well, or not. I mean, if it's more than that, like, if, if, the day comes when I'm really trying to get that done. If it's more than that, we'll have to spend more than that. But I'm pretty sure I could I could get that to work. It depends. I mean, it depends on like how how much water and power, how far the water and the power's got to run, how much the well is going to go. You know what I mean? Like it, it you know. But it it'll be. I mean, whatever it takes is what it takes. If that's what I decide I want to do. But yeah. Oh, no, we're going to have plumbing. We're going to have plumbing and electricity. Oh, totally. We're going to have the whole thing. How long do I keep a job? Uh, about three months. <laughs> Between three weeks and three months. Richard, what up, what up, what up? Good to see you. Yes, Michael. Uh, the Magic of Thinking Big was probably the first book I read that 
Changed my life. Yeah. I still I think I still got a copy of it over there. I've bought it several times. Like when I go on Amazon, it's like you've bought this book eight times. Uh <laughs> you were like, uh yeah, the magic of thinking big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, who wrote that? David Schwartz, Dr. David Schwartz. Yeah. Yeah. Journey, I see you. I don't know, Journey. You know, you know, even if I knew when the next big trip overseas was, I wouldn't say. Um, I'll just I'm just gonna show up. Y'all know me. I'm just gonna be out the country on y'all boys. <laughs> Yo, y'all, oh, you know, you know, so um, yeah. So we but we, you know, we're gonna try to get something going in in 2023. You know, I was, you know, talking, you know, got some some talks. And and you know, so we'll see. Yeah, American money goes 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 pretty far in Thailand. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, I was there. I was like, I've been trying to ball out in the wrong country. Everything's cheaper. Everything's cheaper. I'm like, everything's cheaper. And and other than like drugs, because they frown on that a lot over there. Um, anything you kind of really want is easier to get. You know what I mean? Like it's just easier to get at. Like it's, I don't know. It's just an easier country than America. Like, I was only there two weeks, and I figured that out quick. Like, day two, I was like, dang, it's just an easier country to make it than, than America. I still love America, but, you know, I was like, dang, this, this is different. Hey, Bear Claw, you should leave in January 1st to travel the country and just my pickup truck dashing from one state to the next. That's amazing. Super pumped, yes. Anyone who's tip, just go for it. I don't have a big tip. You'll learn it all along the way. Just make sure you do it. Come January 1st, get moving. Let's go. That's awesome. Let's clap that up for Greg. That's awesome. That's awesome. Keep us informed, man. I'm, I'm going to see how that goes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not expecting to get the land for 20 grand and the shed. Nah, the land is its own price. The shed. You know, if I can get, you know, a, a septic tank, power, plumbing, you know, the shed fully, you know, fully. If I can get all that for 20 grand, I'd be happy. But, yeah, the land's going to be its own, you know. Eric, um, there's different zoning laws throughout the U.S. So um, I'm familiar with the zoning laws in the places where I'm familiar with the zoning laws for. So uh, I, I don't think I'm underestimating them in the places I'm thinking about because I've talked to people who've done it. So that's all I'm going to say here. Um, please give me the benefit of the doubt of knowing that, like, I know some stuff. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Now, if you said you might possibly be underestimating the zoning laws, I'm cool with that. But to say you're under, like, bro, like, I, I do a little research. You know what I mean? Respectfully, I do a little research. You know what I mean? Do I know, like, I know people who have sheds like that. So, so <laughs> you know what I mean? I literally know people. You know what? Keep that same energy. I'm going to show y'all one. Actually, I've already, I'm going to show y'all one soon. That's all I'm going to say. Somebody I know who has that very exact setup. So it's definitely possible. Uh, the magic of thinking big allowed me to see that, like, oh, it's possible to change your life just by thinking you can and I had never really thought along those lines. Like I most like most like most people, I just thought like, oh, life happens to you and you got to try to work your way through it despite all that. I didn't realize like, that that's the book that started to teach me how much power I have. You know, that's the book that got me to the place to where now I can believe because of other books and other things and other people I've listened to that I'm literally tapped into universal energy. Like that was step one being like, hey. You can think something into existence. If you think big, big things happen. You think small, small things happen. Like no one had ever presented it to me that way. So yeah, that book helped me that way. JF, I think wolfing is a great option. I was talking about wolfing the other day. I think it's a great option. You know, make sure you find a decent place to wolf. But like, yeah, I think wolfing is a great option. I see Journey Jamaica's putting you onto that game. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're other countries laugh at us. They do. Like, why do these Americans spend so much money on stuff? And then they have to work so hard to, to keep it. They'll never be home. Crypto Johnny, um, I don't know about animals. It depends. Because, like, animal, you get animals, you got to take care of them. And I'm not, I'm not going to be there. You know what I mean? Like I said, this is the whole land and shed thing is not a is not a settle down thing. It's a, oh, if I want to be home for three, four months or whatever, I got a place to go to. Um, honestly, it's also a when my friends are traveling and they need some place to like pull their van or pull their RV or stay for the night or a week or whatever, they can go to my land, my place, you know. So if I have if I had animals, someone would have to be there full time. And it's not, you know, I don't think it's really going to be that type of scenario, you know. I respect that, Eric. I respect that. Thank you. Uh, VG sound effects. Uh, by the way, when I speak of seasonal jobs, I'm not talking about FedEx, UPS, or jobs like that. Um, but I have worked for FedEx and UPS. So, and they were cool. I mean, they work you. Like, it. let me take that back. Um, I don't mind, like, very strenuous, hard labor. <laughs> So at UPS, very hard, very strenuous. They treat you like a number. And the place I worked at, they yelled at you constantly. Get in there, blah, blah, blah. Well, not constantly, but they yelled. You know, to me, that was like, eh. you know, eventually I got tired of it and left. But like, it it wasn't a deal breaker because like, I'm a hard worker. Um, FedEx, not as bad, but you still, it's all, it ain't easy work. And it's not like you, you know, you don't get a lot of recognition. You just another, just like the box, the you, you damn near one of the boxes. You damn near one of the conveyor belts, one of the forklifts. You know, you're just there to move boxes. And I'm sure this is different from plant to plant and supervisor to supervisor. But from my experience, you're just another number moving the boxes. If you're cool with that, it's cool. Um, now jump in with the if you work seasonally at like FedEx or UPS and you jump with the drivers, like you go out to run packages, that's a little dependent on the driver too, but you still, it's still pretty strenuous. It's still get the job done. So if that's not your type of environment, it probably wouldn't be good for you. But like, if you don't mind working very hard for very little recognition, eh, it's kind of fun, you know. Yes, yeah, Elon Musk is coming out with the, the module. That, you know what I mean? I really do think that as we progress, as housing gets un, more and more unaffordable, they will start coming up with more affordable options. It always goes to balance. As traditional housing, I should say, gets more unaffordable, other people will see that there's a dollar to be made in very affordable housing. You know, anyway. Sorry if I'm way behind on these comments. Spinning wheels, what up, what up, what up? I don't, I don't watch the NFL. I'm glad, hey, I gotta be honest, I'm glad sports happen week after week. Because like, I, you know, y'all know me, I love my women's basketball. So I, I think it gives people an outlet. Like I, I can't, I can't sit here and poop on sports. Like it gives people an outlet. Is it crazy the money athletes make? Sure. But, uh, you know, well, the athletes I like don't make that crazy money. So, but, um, you know, it gives people an outlet. I can't be, I can't be mad at it. Yeah, John, Mexico, anybody can hop on a plane, fly down to Mexico. Cheaper standard of living. Like, we don't, you know, they've been trying to scare us about Mexico. I ain't scared. Incognito. Yeah, man. hey, I say definitely go for the vlog, the Woods vlog type video. But trust me, I totally understand the what am I gonna talk about? That's like, like bro. Welcome to my life. <laughs> Why do you think I do so many live streams? Because y'all are gracious enough to give me ideals and questions. Or like some days, man, it's, oh I'm gonna go do a video, it's a perfect spot. Then I'm like, what am I gonna talk about? Yeah, hey, wait, hey, yeah, but you'll figure something out. Uh, Alvin, um, being a security guard or officer, uh, to me would be like getting paid to 
walk around the seventh rung of hell. Like, not, not I'll take this for me. Yeah, Jay, it, it's it's def I always say that. Like, I will definitely say that. As much as I think, you know, sports players might make more than they probably should in some in some sports, it's us that gives them salaries. So, you know, it's us that gives them salaries. It's us who, even if the ticket prices are inflated, it's us who buys them. You know, so it's us doing it. If we if we was like we're not paying, you know what I mean. If nobody went to the stadium, they'd lower the prices. So like it's us, you know. So love you too, Michael. Thank you, thank you. It's us. It's just like social media. We're always demonizing social media. It's us. If nobody was on TikTok, it wouldn't be lowering our attention span. Nobody's on it. If nobody's buying them high price tickets. They wouldn't be selling them. You know what I mean? They'd lower the price. You know what I mean? So like it's, it's always us. And then we blame it's always humans. And then we blame sport, social media, but it's us. I right, storm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh Super Chat Squad says stood up by a guy I was talking to four or five years. I felt ugly. Uh, you're not ugly, you're amazing, you're beautiful. Just just because, and I know it's I know the feeling. Um just because someone else doesn't appreciate you doesn't mean there's you're still who you were no matter what. This is what I look at these days. Like this is how I deal with rejection. This you're still who you are no matter what. Someone not appreciating that doesn't diminish you. You know, I'm really him. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm really him no matter what. You know what I mean? And that's how I think we all should think. Not always easy to do, trust me. Um, I all you know what I mean. Um, but like you are, you are. Just people who think you the bomb, if someone else doesn't appreciate it, like that's just on them. Like they have that right. But uh, uh you know, never feel ugly. You know, like it's it's there's a there's a million people out there check. Like one of the reasons I say travel around, you meet more people, you realize, dang, that's some people out here really jacking for the cat. And the same is true with you. But I hope you feel better. Hope you feel better. Um definitely not trying to like downplay your feelings. I've been there, I know. Um Super chat squad. You're not ugly. Let's do it. Alvin, I don't feel bad quitting. Only time I feel bad if I quit without two weeks notice is if I think it's really going to like impact the job. Like if I think, oh, they're really not going to be able to do what they need to do because I quit. But if they can still get the job done without me there, I don't. No, no, I never signed a paper saying that I would quit. Give two weeks notice. I never in my life signed that. I never in my life said, signed a paper that said, when I quit, I will give two weeks notice. They came up with this. Somebody just came up with this. Somebody pulled that out of their annual regions 60 years ago. This is, that's another example of things we live by that we did not sign off on. People think it's, it's gospel. You have to give two weeks notice. I said, who came up with that? I didn't. Nobody ever asked me. So I don't feel bad. I never told you I'd give you two weeks notice. Now, if it's a company I respect and I like them, I try to do it. If I can do it, I'll, you know what I mean? But like, if I feel like doing it, I will do it. But I don't feel bad if I don't because I never said I would. I show up and work, you pay me. When I don't show up and work, you don't have to pay me. End of discussion. You know what I mean? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I don't feel bad like that. Unless I feel like I'm putting them like at a disadvantage, and then I'll try to give notice. Hey, I storm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Says I'm gorgeous. Five people compliment me on my outfit, but him. Super chat spot, by the way. Thank you. Exactly. You're gorgeous. Don't worry about that person. I know, like sometimes when the when the person you want to find you attractive or find you gorgeous or be with you ain't with you, you kind of feel down. But like, once again, I go back to gratitude. Yeah, that person may not like me. I'm in a weird mood right now, but dang, five other people thought I was it. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people who might go through life, never have five people compliment them on their outfit in one day. So like, 
You know what I mean? That's why I look at it. Super Chat Squad. John had four or five of them on him at, at Yellowstone. Yes. Uh, Nick, it, it, it takes, I think it takes a little longer to get your passport now. For me, it took like, I think less than a month, but that was in like 2018. Um, I think it takes a little longer now. Give me one second, folks. I'll be right back. We back. Thanks, Mikey J. Hey, hey, I storm super chat squad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I says you're gorgeous too. Hey, I told you I'm really him. I'm re <laughs> these days. I'm really actually starting to feel that, and I think everybody should. That's the thing. It's not conceited. It's not arrogant. We all should feel like I'm really him. I'm really her. I'm really them. We all should feel like, bro, like I'm it. Everybody should feel like that because we all are. There are no levels. We're all on the same level. Some people might be more classically attractive, but like we all got our stuff. Like it's weird that we look at like looks as the top one. You know what I mean? And when at the end of the day, we all have people we're attracted to who aren't like nines and tens. We all got, you mean like, that's just one area of attraction, but we focus on that one so much. I'm like, it's crazy. Like, yeah, I mean, if you look good, you look good. No problem. But like, we all got our stuff. I'm really him. You're really her. You're really them. You're really him. Like. I storm super chat squad. Oh, uh, you feel like you need plastic surgery because of him? Hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend getting plastic surgery for anyone else, but like, do you? You know what I mean? Your money, your body, your choice. Uh, a fizzle says Tim, how do you deal with the fear of losing someone that means the most to you in this world, like your parents? Uh, I honestly. It's not something I really dwell on. You know what I mean? I just, I just, I don't know. Uh, you know, it was, how do I word this so, so it doesn't sound insensitive? One of the byproducts, I think, of being a nomad and moving around a lot and, and not having people in my life every single day. You know what I mean? Like, I do not want to lose the people that mean the world to me. But I feel like I'm not as terrified of it because I'm always moving around. Like, I don't have people in my life long term anyway. So the feeling of loss, I feel like, or even thinking about it isn't as great because I'm always by myself. I'm always leaving people. So I just think for me, it's not. And not saying I don't love people and like don't, you know, we'll miss them severely. But like, I just feel like because of the lifestyle I lead, that's not something that. I'm used to missing people. So like, you know, I just, and, and honestly, I just don't think about it. Like I'm not, I don't spend, I spend very little time thinking about like people dying. Like it is what it is. You know, like I spend more time thinking about me dying. <laughs> uh, Cause my death is, is, is funny, but <laughs> let me stop saying that. Uh, you know what I mean? But I just really don't spend time thinking about it. Like it is what it is, you know, um, death comes to us all, you know, everything you love in life, you'll lose. So like, you know, I, I, you, you, I, I, I think it's just one of those things like you can't do anything about it. Like it's just 
So I try not to, I'd rather spend the time while I'm here and they're here thinking about the positive, you know, there'll be plenty of time for, for us thinking about death when death comes, you know what I mean? Yeah, my nursing home better have good Wi-Fi when I get old. No, I got to say, my comment earlier, I'm definitely not demonizing plastic surgery. You know, I, I told you, all I, I, I find, you know, the, the fake lips, fake cheek, all that incredibly attractive. You know what I mean? Like all of that stuff's hot to me. BBLs, even if it's hot, it's all hot to me. I love it all. Um, so fake is its own fake is its own reality. You know what I mean? So I'm definitely not of the mindset that like plastic surgery isn't real because like, it's just different. Like, you know what I mean? Like everything's real. Um, so like, it's, if you want to change the way your nose looks, that's just as real as not changing it. You know what I mean? You still have a nose that looks a certain way, which at the end of the day, it's still a no, you know what I mean? Like it's all, so like if, if that's something you want to do, do it. But like, I would just shy away from doing it for someone else. Like if you like the, the plastic, you, bro, do it, sis, do it. But like, I don't know. I'd be careful doing it for someone else. But yeah, I'm all for plastic surgery. If that's what you want to do, do it. Do it, do it. Oh, Night Fighter. When did I feel like my life was coming together? Um, you know, it's crazy. I didn't. It's not like I felt like my life wasn't together in my 20s. You know, so it's hard to I can look back now and say, you know, my mid 30s is when my life started to transition to where it is now. But like in my 20s and, and around that time period, I started to feel like, oh, yeah, something's off. But I got to say, even in my 20s, like I didn't really feel maybe because I was doing what I wanted to do at the time. But I will say my life started to go down this direct in this direction in my mid 30s. Yeah. I storm. Thank you. Super chat squad. Uh, so because this guy for extra ugly. Uh, I don't really know if there's anything else we can say on that. Um, respectfully, uh, you know, like. The, the key would be to, to get ourselves to a place in life where we don't allow someone else to make us feel ugly. Uh, honestly, you know, I, yeah, I appreciate the love and the super chat and you probably won't super chat after this. You might, you know what I mean? Sometimes we got to realize it's us. People are going to do what they do. The, the issue here, just being real and not trying to cut you down or nothing, but like the issue sometimes is our thinking. And so this is an opportunity. I feel like to be like, okay, this ain't the thoughts I want to have moving forward. How do I grow and get to a place where no matter what someone else does to me, I still appreciate who I am as a person. Because people gon' come and go. People gon' not find you attractive or not in the way you want them to. The key is getting ourselves to a place where that doesn't affect our view of ourselves. Or being able to be like, so what if I'm ugly? I'm still him, <laughs> you know? So yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's the game. You'll never be able to will someone into loving you. Never. So self-love is, is the only game. Corey Cummins. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Super chat squad. Thank you, Corey Cummins. Cheers. I'm out of coffee, but we can still cheers. Thank you. Uh, Alvin, I try not to get angry, um, but I will admit, like, if if someone messes with, with, with people I care about, I have to really put in some work to calm the anger, but I try not to get, like, angry, like, you know, it's, but yeah, you mess, you mess with people I care about, I'm, you know, that's when the, but, like, I, I don't allow myself to stay in that mode, like, these days. 
In Watson, happy Sunday. How you doing? Yeah, Jonathan. Gratitude for gratitude for what we still can do. You know what I mean? You can still get out of bed, walk around, eat, enjoy yourself. That's amazing. So what if someone doesn't find it's attractive? Like, bro, you still, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, gratitude, I think definitely helps. Hey, I still appreciate that. I said, I love you regardless. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I was hoping I didn't piss you off. Not just because of the money, but just in general, I like pissing people off, but I feel like it had to be said. Um, you know what I mean? So like, yeah, like it, it, it just, that's the, and that's not a, that's not a, oh, let me beat myself up. It's just like, okay, I see, I don't want to feel like this no more. What can I do? to like get to a place where the next time, if this happens, I'm not feeling the same way. Um, yes. So super chat squad. Thank you. Hey, classy neurotic. Said I love watching your content when I'm anxious. You remind me of the things that are truly important in life. Much love. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I appreciate that comment. Cause like, that's kind of what Alan Watts's speeches have always done for me. And I, I, I love the fact to be able to, like, do the same. You know what I mean? I listen to Alan Watts, and I'll just, oh, man, it's not really it's not really that serious. <laughs> so, yeah, I appreciate that. That's awesome. Thank you. Jonathan, discovering the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super Chat Squad. Appreciate that love. Says, are you going to post videos from abroad overseas? I think your channel will explode with videos in Eastern Europe and Asia. Um. Yes, when I do go overseas, I will post videos. Um, I do have to say this as a content creator, I'm obligated on behalf of all the other content creators. Just because you go out the country doesn't mean your channel will explode. Um, there are tons of people who post travel videos that get like no views. So like, I, ju I just have to say that as a content creator. So do I think it'll add an element to my channel? And if I do it right, do I think it will help my channel? Yeah, but it's not always a guarantee. I just have to put that out there. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna post videos when I'm out the country. Like I said, I want to when I when I am one of the things I want to look into is yeah, how do you go down to Mexico and find a place to live for cheap? And you know, I want I want to you know I want to put out content for people who are like, hey, I want to get out the country either for travel or to live long term. I want to be on the for well, not forefront because people have been doing it forever. But I want to put that message out there. So I definitely will post uh, content when I go out the country. But yeah, it's not always a formula for huge growth. Um, but we'll see. Maybe I'll be good at it because I'm really him. <laughs> but thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, guy, I think, yeah, sometimes just taking a break, you know, to recharge. So, yeah, saying I'm ultimately not going to let the world get me down, but I'm going to pull away for a little bit just to, you know, recharge, whatever, and I'm going to be back at it. Like, I think that is the, the, the wise move. Yes, totally, totally. I storm coming through again with the love. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it says, how do you stay calm in such a loud world? I try to quiet the world as much as possible. Um, I don't watch a lot of the news. I, uh, I spend a lot of time alone. I spend a lot of time in nature. I just feel like my world is a lot quieter than most people's. Just, I just actively try to quiet the world down. Um, because, yeah, the world could be a very loud place. And if you're tapped into everything everybody else is tapped into, it's very loud. Um, I try to quiet my world as much as possible. There are some things I do that sometimes I'm like, yeah, I can't. There's some content I enjoy and I'm like, I can't. You know, for example, T.S. Madison, I love her content. I've been following her channel for years. Her morning shows, they talk about a lot of negativity. I can't watch it no more. I love I, I think she's one of the funniest people out there. One of my favorite, you know, I don't like to say favorite, a celebrity I really appreciate. I think she's going to be the most famous transgender woman in the world, too. I can't watch her morning show. It's too negative, too loud. Can't do it. So I have to actively make some sacrifices sometimes to, like, 
not hear everything because yeah the world just be too loud yeah it's too no i just i just kind of just you know set up barriers and block out the noise uh yeah hey isabel thank you thank you thank you super chat squad super chat train appreciate that so just like ice cream some people like strawberries versus chocolate uh says nothing about chocolate just preferences um same with people i agree i agree isabel and like when you can realize that you're there you know we're taught to believe oh this is pretty this is whatever this is better it's different and the thing is we all know this because we all have different preferences we've all been like man something about him something about her i just like and your friends are like what but then we still think there's a certain no, it's preference. There will be people who rocking with you. There'll be people who won't find the ones who do. Because you're not going to be able to convince the ones who don't. It don't matter what you do. They still going to be like, I just don't find him attractive. He's annoying. He's losing his hair. He's got a gap in his teeth. His beard looks dry. Like they, just, he can't dress. They just not going to like me. The people who do, though, really do. Is it John, is it John Anderson? It's like some girls don't like guys like me, but some girls do. Facts. Let's go. Um, yeah, you you never win the game of making someone like you. And even if they do, it's only going to be short term. Better off winning the game of where are the people who like me? I always say fish in the ponds where you get the most bites. Fish in the ponds where you get the most bites. Like, come on, where the bait you're using works. This is my bait. I'm after the, the I don't want to, I'm not calling women fish, but you know what I mean? I'm after the women who like this. <laughs> There's some out there. Say with everybody. So thank you, Isabella. Uh, the sound bar coming through. Super chat squad, super chat train. True, true. Let's go. Uh, thoughts on caffeine? Anything that gives you energy quickly probably isn't good for you. I say that having just finished off a venti, dark roast coffee. Uh, from the Starbucks. Yes, I got my, my my Starbucks points and my Sky Miles. But, um, you know, I, I think in this country, we drink way more caffeine than we should. I'll say that. And myself included. Yeah. Jonathan, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely want to spend more time out the country. Um, I don't know if I want to teach English overseas, but yeah, yeah, that's definitely an option. Um, yeah. Boss, I have not tried day trading. No, I don't know if I'd be good at it. Um, it's an option, though. There's, there's so many options. Making some coins. How to create better habits after having bad habits for years. I feel like that's one of those things where, like, the answer is in the question. Like if you identify I've got bad habits, you just have to make yourself pick up good habits. The hard part is making ourselves pick up good habits. But like, I don't know if there's any, any secret, there's no secret to it. It's just like, if the doctor's like, hey, you probably could lose a little weight, you got to exercise. It's not a secret. Or for me, it's like, hey, Tim, if you want to gain some weight, you got to eat more. Work out more. It's not a secret. It's just making yourself do it. Like, and like nobody can really make you do it. So I feel like what you like, hey, this is a bad habit. I want to switch to some good habits. You have to figure out how to do it, you know, make yourself do it. What motivates you to do it? Um, and like I feel like your body will always over time adjust to good habits. Like if something's good for you, your body wants that. It might be hard in the beginning, but like I feel like over time your body will always adjust to what's good for it. Because at the end of the day, your body is you or your body, you know, but like, you know, if something's good for your body, it's going to adjust to it. So, yeah. As far as anxiety that you can relapse, I, I mean, you can't. Just keep doing it. You mean, you know what I mean? Like you can't allow that to stop you because then, you know, the game is to just go. And if you have to do good habits, despite being scared, you're going to relapse. Well, then that's the game. You know what I mean? Like you just. There's no way you can stop anxiety about something like that. Like, there's really no, like, if that's the way your mind works, well, then you just realize, you have to identify, okay, I know the whole time I'm doing this, I'm going to, in the back of my mind, I'm going to be scared I relapse, but that's just the game for me. Because um, there's really nothing you could say or do that would make anxiety go away about something like that, 
you know. Johnny, uh, if somebody gives me a mean look, Crypto Johnny, I just, I don't do nothing. Like, I try not, you know, like, what? You know I mean? Like, I, I might be like, <laughs> like, it's no, whatever. Like, I, or I might be like, wow. You know, like, it's just not like, people are allowed to look at me mean. You know, I don't know. got nothing to do with me. Hey, Stargaze, what up, what up, what up? Found your channel a few weeks ago. Absolutely enjoy your lives. Thank you. Thank you. Quick question, 56 and active. Are there seasonal positions that you could recommend? Uh, the only, I definitely think there are seasonal positions. The only reason I wouldn't say there's any I could recommend is because I don't know what you like to do. Um, so I'm very, do what you love. As the title says, do what you love. So the jobs I like, you may not like. So yeah, you know, jobs is kind of, it's hard to, recommend a job because I don't know what kind of job you'd like to do. So, you know me, I clean hotel rooms. Might not like that. So I I, I would go to coolworks.com. I'm going to put the link. Hold on. This would be my advice. Um, this is this is my advice to everyone. Copy. OK. Um, because, yeah, I can't. I don't know what you like to do. So I would go to Coolworks and look around, see what jobs are there and then apply for all the ones that, you know, look like they might be fun to you uh because yeah my ideal of a fun job might be holy hell for you <laughs> really yeah 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 yeah. definitely yeah i would go to course look around night fighter do it go to mexico vacation get your wisdom teeth removed hang out in the rainforest do it do it do it go for it uh retired 2019 i probably eat twice a day maybe today i'm gonna whenever the stream is over i'll probably eat lunch and then sometime tonight you know we'll eat a dinner uh you know so maybe twice a day Uh, never tried coding. Um, no, nah. just never was interested in it. No. I don't do much. Yeah, coding seemed just, you know, seemed like a lot of work. Seemed very serious. Very real. <laughs> seems like real work. They're like, Tim, did you scrub toilets? That That's easy. Anybody can do that. Coding seemed very serious. You know, yeah, I've been on Cool Works looking for my summer job. They got some good stuff on there. Do I think America is the land of the free, home of the brave, like they tell us in school? Um, I definitely think we have some freedoms here that a lot of other countries don't have. So, I've always said that. Home of the brave is subjective. Like, can we really say we're braver than other countries? Uh, but I definitely realize and appreciate and am grateful for a lot of the freedoms we have here that other countries don't have. So, yeah. Jilly, you code. <laughs> it is a lot. Yeah, see? Uh-huh. Nah, I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to do that. I ain't trying to do that. I ain't trying to do that. Mike, I haven't, I've never long distance backpacked. I'm not sure if I, like, I I, I kind of want to take the train and backpack around Europe one day. But, like, other than that, I don't, I don't know. Sage, you know I love my, my chicken wings. Yeah, you know I love my chicken wings. Yeah, we're going to do that. Uh, advice on bringing family members back together? I I would, that's out of my realm of of, of knowledge. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's a hard one. That's a hard one. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to do that. Yeah. Urban lady checking in. How you doing? Eli, uh, I don't, I know there are some sites that cater to overseas seasonal work. Yes. Coolworks is one of them. Like they got a couple jobs in Canada, but there are, um, you know, sites that that's what they do is they're, they're more catered. They're more fo focused on, excuse me, 
overseas seasonal jobs, but I don't know any off the top of my head. I used to, but I've forgotten them. You know, plus the good people of CoolWorks in the past were have reached out and you know they've sent me free stuff. So I always always rep the A. I use CoolWorks, um, so like literally it was a life changing website for me. But yeah, they're awesome people, so I always talk about them. So. I ain't gonna give them other websites, no free shine. I'm joking. If I knew one, I would say it, but I don't. I don't know any. Oh, you know. What is that noise I'm hearing? I'm hearing a noise. What is dripping? Hang on, I think I left the. Hang on. Something. There's a leak in my <laughs> there's a leak in my shower. Crazy. Have to call the office about that. Linda, how's it going? Yeah, there's a leak in my shower in the in the ceiling. The person above me showering and it's like leaking. Interesting. Okay. Where are we at? Ooh, I can't wait for this lease to be up. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Grateful to have this apartment. I cannot wait for this. Uh, okay. Where are we at? Where are we at? How to find happiness in hell? I always say focus on gratitude. Be grateful for what you got, what you in hell, you know? Ricky, I think it's, you said, is it better to be selfish or selfless? Um, I think in some areas, being selfish and like, like, like I, I don't think either is like, I think, a proper balance of both is the recipe for success. You know, I think you can be too selfless and not do enough for yourself. I think you'd be too selfish and like not do enough for other people. So I think neither one of them is good or bad. It just depends on the level and the situation. Um, I think we live in a time where people have never been more selfish in the wrong way and less selfish in the right way. Uh, but I think, yeah, it just depends on the situation, you know. I think it's a balance. Eric, when my lease is up, um, I know this summer I want to work a seasonal job, but other than that, I don't really have any plans. I definitely have not calculated my Social Security. Like, it's, it doesn't even factor into my plans. Like, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that time in my life. That's like 20 years from now. So, like, I don't spend, I spend very little time worrying about my 60s trust me um but i don't even factor that in like no like it, it you know what i mean like yeah i have yeah i don't even know how i would calculate that and i don't really care um so no i don't know yes i've seen the rush hour movies crypto johnny um i don't know if gainesville well t-shirt weather is subjective um I might wear a t-shirt in Gainesville now being up in the, you know, in these parts of the, of, of the country for, for a couple of years, but I don't know if the people who live in Gainesville is wearing t-shirts right now. Uh, see, that's the problem. Really. We have, a, we have the wrong view of selfish. There are times when it's good to be selfish. It is good to think about yourself. 
but there's also a time and a place to think about other people. It's good to think about it's good to think about yourself and good to think about other people. This ideal that being selfish is wrong is like to me just out of whack. Like it's about it just needs to be a balance. Sometimes you got to think about yourself first before you can truly help other people. Sometimes helping other people is what allows you to help yourself. It's a balance. People who are too selfish, yeah. But there's people who are too selfless. You know? I like that, John. There's no such thing as bad weather, just proper attire. That's funny. That's funny. I feel like in the middle of a flood, you might not say that, but <laughs> I feel like in the middle of a hurricane, hard to argue that, but it's funny. I feel in the middle of a tsunami might not be what you want to hear, but it is funny. Keep going. I feel like in the middle of no. <laughs> Uh, uh, Eric, right now I, I primarily use my cell phone. I do have a, a little hundred dollar webcam I use for these streams now, and I bought a, a light, but uh, mainly I just use my 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 iPhone. Hey, retired two hundred nineteen. I appreciate that. Thank you, Super Chat Squad. Appreciate the love, I, and I appreciate your. Uh, your dedication to the channel. Thank you. Uh, it says, I appreciate your dedication to the live streams. Yeah, man. We, uh, which I got to say, I enjoy doing them. So on one hand, it is, you know, does take time and other things. But on the other hand, I enjoy doing them. So, yeah. So, you know, it's 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 easy to be dedicated when you enjoy doing something. Um, you know, and especially when, you know, people, y'all are an amazing uh, community here. And, and the love I get back, you know. Is so empowering that it's easy to do. It's easy to stay dedicated. So, um, yeah, thank you. JF, I would definitely recommend my lifestyle to someone in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, their 50s. Their, you know what I mean? Like, well, but yeah, definitely 20s. Yeah, like it's, it's. I feel like 20s is, is this lifestyle's cool any decade, but I think 20s is probably the easiest, you know? If it's what you're trying to do, I would recommend this one in their 20s if this is what they want to do. It's not for everybody because like some people don't want to live like this. But if you have some ideals that like, man, I really want to see some stuff, meet some new people. Like live like they go for it. Bev, check it in. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A day like I'm, I'm weird. Like I like the physical stuff. I will admit, I love the manual labor. The mental stuff, I'd be like, I ain't got time for that. You know what I mean? But the the, the physical stuff, yeah, give me that. Give me that. Um, I'm just weird like that. Yeah. Jimma Davis Studios. What's up? What's up? What's up? Jimma Davies Studios. What's up? Exactly. Retired 2019, living the Timothy Ward lifestyle in, in the 60s. Nice. Living it good. <laughs> living it well. <laughs> Guy, I'm glad you appreciate the live streams. That's awesome. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a volcano. No, I don't think so. Bev, I'm good. I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm up. We here. Yeah, I mean, we... <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I don't know why that made me laugh. I don't know. It's a good laugh. Oh, uh, oh we got to... Uh, uh, hang on. Yeah, I'm definitely have to go for a walk later. Work out some of these kinks. I didn't sleep the best last night. I think I woke up at like five o'clock. That's because I ate a bunch of ice cream. It's rare. I ate ice cream, but the other day I was really feeling some. I was gonna buy me like an Oreo Blizzard, and I was like, Tim, just go to the store and like get a carton of cookies and cream. So I did. So I've been eating on that. So I think that screwed my sleep up. All that sugars. Chris, we still here. We still here. Yeah, you're going to find that balance one day. The balance of mental and physical. You'll find it one day, Angela. Keep looking. You'll find it. It can be hard, though. Yeah, that's a hard one. Yeah. Usually it's one or the other. 
You gonna go to Washington State for the month? Retire 2019? That's a long time, a month. That's a long time. Uh, Eric, I, I, it was easy to stay motivated when I started this channel because, like, like I said, I like I like doing it. So it 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 wasn't a money play, you know what I mean? So like, I had no ulterior motives other than I like making videos. So it's easy to make videos when you like making videos, like. It's like if somebody loves cooking, you know, and, you know, if they start cooking for other people because they love it and then it turns into something profitable, like it'll be easy for them to stay motivated cooking because they love cooking. You know, the money's just a byproduct, you know. So for me, the views and the subscribers and there's just, you know, there's money like it's just the income. It's just was extra because like I just wanted to make videos, you know. Something about video fascinates me. I, I think it's the the showman in me. I don't know, the entertainer in me, the whatever. Like, I just like, they don't care. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, it made it easy to stay motivated when I like doing it. Uh, no, I don't nap in my car, Priya. No, not really. Not anymore. If I'm road tripping, sometimes I do. I'll nap in it, sleep in it, but not, not now. Uh, Dirty Harry, I, I I don't think I'll ever reach a million subscribers. Um, I mean, it's not even something I think about, but I mean, if I did, I'm sure I'd do a million subscribers live stream. <laughs> something extremely exciting like that. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't see hitting a million. Um, honestly, I don't even think I want to. Like, it's just I'm not trying to get that. I don't know. Like, I mean, we're, we're, I'm blessed. I tell you, once I hit on a thousand, I'm blessed. You know, I was blessed the whole time. But like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't. that's not a dream of mine. That's definitely not a goal of mine. There's a million subscribers. No. John, I think I'll do a, I'm going to try to do a Christmas stream, um, depending on what else I got going on. I mean, it, it, like if something comes up and I get some plans, I won't. But like, I don't know. I doubt I have plans. Um, I don't know. But I'll, right now, I, I'm planning on doing like a Christmas stream. Yeah. Hey, Jess, that's awesome. 25, starting to trade futures. Hopefully uh, you can be consistently profitable so you don't have to work a full-time job forever. Hey, that's awesome. That's the move. That's the move. Get started young. Get started young. Take back your financial future. Do it. Do it. That's awesome. Good luck with that. I'm thinking about that leak in the ceiling. I'm like, oh, now I got to write up a ticket and maintenance has to come. Ugh, blah, blah. Blech. Yeah, Journey, that is one of the hardest part of seasonal work is when you have a roommate in the same room as you. Yeah, that's that's one of the, the biggest cons. That's why I'll be trying to find places that you get your own room. Um, but yeah, that's one of the biggest cons is the roommate in the in the room with you. Like that's that takes some some adapting to. It's just a drip, guy. It's just a drip. But it's it's a bad enough drip that, like, you know what I mean? They need to get in here and take care of it. So Kenny, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I would add, like, I would just ask him. You know, you can call HR and just be like, am I gonna have a roommate? Like, you know what I mean? I'm 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 ask questions. I would just call them before you get there and be like, hey, you think I'm, am I gonna have a roommate? I don't want a roommate. Let's see what they say. Like, what is it? But this time of year, I think most people get their own room. Things have changed since I was there, but when I was there this time of year, after like 2020, they started like this time of year, everybody got their own room. But I I mean, but I would just call and ask them, like, just curious. Am I in my room? You know, hey, they, that's what they're there for. You know, I, I they know me. I ask questions. I I I make statements as well. I be I be like, I don't want a roommate. <laughs> that's, that's, I be like, I don't want a roommate. Yeah, but you have to. I'm like, I just really don't want a roommate. Like, I be making statements, but um, you know, I was I. 
I've analyzed and realized that there were a couple of years I was, I was a bit too much of a diva in season four. God, it ain't it ain't my job to check the upstairs apartment. It ain't that ain't my job. I'll send in the I'll send in the ticket, but it ain't my job to check the upstairs. They, you know what I mean? I've done maintenance before. It was my job then. It ain't here. As much money as I pay, no, nah, I ain't going up there. I know what you're saying though, but like that's on that's on them. Mikey, uh, I say we when I'm talking about me. Uh, I just do a habit I picked up from my dad. He did the same thing. So yeah, I just. Say we when I mean me. JF, I started season of work without a car and I did it for three years, maybe more uh, without one. So you don't have to have one. And a lot of the listings will say a car is not needed. You know, some of them will say, hey, some of them will be like, hey, if you have a car, it's easier, but you don't need one. Others will be like, hey, we got public transportation. You don't even need a car. So a lot of the listings will say, but there's definitely most people don't have a car. I would, Or I should say most. I'd say it's about 50 50. You know, people with cars, people without cars. So, yeah, you don't need one. Like I, I didn't have one for like three years. Like I didn't. You know. And there was no thought of even at that time, like getting a car. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would just, you know, why did I finally get one? Oh, because I moved. I got an apartment in town, in Estes Park, and I was going to have to drive to work. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's why I got one. Yeah, but as long as I stayed in employee housing, I didn't even think about getting a car. Is when I start. I went full time at the Y and you couldn't stay in employee housing after a certain amount of time. So I got a car, I got a car. Um, but before that, like I wasn't even, I, there's so many people with cars. If I ever need to go somewhere, I got a ride or I just, if if Uber or a taxi was possible, I did that. I walked a lot too, but yeah, you don't have to have a car. Hey guy, I, I, this is just my opinion. I would say, Either way, you're good. I think if you if you apply now, most of the places ain't gonna check your background. Um, and if you wait a month, that's still early. So either way, either way. Yeah, Journey's doing it now. No car. Mm -hmm. Was it hard to adjust to driving in the snow? I try to drive in the snow as little as possible, but like, it's doable. You know what I mean? It's honestly the. I won't say it was hard. Like there's just things you learn and you learn quick, you know, the stopping at the light. Don't you have to learn to stop sooner and gentler, 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 a more gentle stop. You know, you don't slam on the bricks, uh, you know, just stuff like that. Like it's just, it's just something you got to learn. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's hard, but like there's some things you learn, but you learn them pretty quick. You learn them pretty quick. Uh, that first time you hit the brakes like normal and you slide right through the intersection, you learn then. <laughs> you learn then. The first time you hit the brakes too hard and you slide down a hill and can't stop, oh, you learn then. But uh, yeah, I mean, people do it every day. So it's just a matter of picking it up. But I definitely recommend like not driving in a blizzard first, but like kind of progressively getting braver about when you drive in the snow, but yeah, you'll, you'll pick it up. El will you going, you going to spend some time alone this, this holidays. Hey, Hey, do it, do it. You know, there's, there's no rules. If you like, man, I just want to be alone this holiday season. Hey, it's a good time to do it. Uh, nah, you don't have to take exams for a seasonal job, Johnny. Um, unless like there's a driving test you have to take to become a driver or something like that. But like, nah, there's, there's no, as far as I've seen, there's no exams. Like it's, it's not that deep.
<laughs> yeah, Journey. Love it. Yes. Now's the time, man. Now's the time to be applied. Yeah, if you if you apply for summer jobs now, you're you're ahead of the curve. And it it me, I feel I feel good. I feel better about a company if I applied early and they got back to me early. That means that company's on the ball. You know, if they're waiting around till March to get their spring and summer people, but like if it's not even 2023, excuse me, and they're already actively recruiting and doing interviews and hiring. I know that company is on the ball. And if they're on the ball with that, to my mind, it feels like they might be more on the ball with other stuff. Not always true, but like that kind of, I'm like, oh, they already out here hiring? Okay. And it makes me think that they're probably going to have a full roster, which is always good. What's up, James? James always has some interesting takes on life. Oh, <laughs> always has some interesting takes on life. I'll give you that. I, I, I even when I disagree, like like this one, uh, <laughs> I, I think love is a little more than a smiling face. Um, but in your reality, it might be that respect. Um, I'm gonna be honest. Retired 2019. I don't think you would like seasonal work. Like, I mean, I feel like you're very set in your ways. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I don't, I just, no, I just don't, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm not negatively at all saying that, but I just think like, you'd be like, why am I doing this? Like, what what am I doing this for? Um, You know what I mean? So yeah, I don't think it would be the things you have to put up with. I don't think like, you know, you don't have need to put up with them. So I don't think you would put up with them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, that, yeah, yeah. And some of that comes from knowing you personally. So, like, I just, you know what I mean? Like, I just know some of you be like, I ain't, why am I doing this? <laughs> you know, for example, a, a friend of mine, uh, she does YouTube. Uh, her name's Hel- her name's Bella. Her channel was Hella Bella. I had her on the channel years ago. She went and did seasonal work and left rather quickly because she was like, I don't need to put up with this. You know what I mean? Not saying that any of us have to. You know, but like she, she was just like, I, I can, no, nah, like I'm not gonna put, no, nah, yeah, it just wasn't, yeah. I feel like, yeah. You know? You know? I have never been to a meditation retreat. No. Um, no. I, I kind of like, I don't know if that would be my thing. Um, I don't do people, so. Yeah, I just, like if I'm a, would I like to, you know, would I like to meditate in some peaceful surroundings? Yeah, but like, you, you'll notice with me, I'm, I'm very just like, do it on my own, no matter what it is. You, you rarely see me, you know, doing things in a group, unless it's like my friends. But like signing up for stuff that other PIs is just not really, I, I don't know. I get, I get uncomfortable. You know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, retired 2019. I know you. You's like, man, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sylvie, how's it going? Good to see you. Sylvie Crickenberger. I love that name. Ricky, the cool thing about getting humbled is you don't have to figure out how to do it. Life will do it for you. That's the cool thing about getting humbled. Do you want to know the best way to get humbled? Pray. This is what I found. If I ever pray like, hey, help me to stay humble, give it about a week, two weeks, a month, and life will humble the crap out of me. Just ask for humility, and I promise you it will come. They already got it prepackaged. They will put it in the mail. You will get a you will get a piping hot humble pie right, right to your doorstep. You ain't even got to sign for it. Free shipping and handling. <laughs> Ask for humility. Bet it show up. Pray about it. If you're praying, you know, if you pray. If not, just ask. 
Ask the universe, whatever. But like, ask for humility. I bet it show up when you really don't want it to. Damn, I ain't with that humility right here. Yeah, man. Hey, glad to hear that. Glad to hear that, uh, JF. I'm glad the videos uh, have been inspirational. It's awesome. Yeah, sometimes you don't even ask for it, it comes. But if you're looking for a little more humility, I promise life will lend a hand. Find out the hard way. Oh, Sylvie, about to edit some photos? Nice, nice. Omar Khan, what up, what up, what up? Yeah, they will ship that humility overnight. Dang, I knew it. Here it is. Get trying to you thinking you something you're not. Okay. Okay. You know, it's that it's that balance of self-esteem and humility. That's what I pray for these days. You know, because you can have low self-esteem and still be arrogant like a mug. You know what I mean? So that balance of 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 self-esteem and humility. I know who I am and like nothing more. You know. Which these days I realize all of us are everything and nothing. So I'm really him, but that means nothing. <laughs> you see, you see, you see, I'm that dude, but that means nothing in the grand scheme of things. You know, I'm just as good as every other human on this planet, but that means nothing. When you get to that spot, you know, when it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really nothing. But I'm, I'm everything I, I am. Every, everything that I am, I am. But all that means nothing. Yeah, it's, it's, life is all about balance. I think it's all about balance. Last time I wore dress shoes other than Abby's wedding. Shout out to my sis. Uh, I think it was at my friend Savannah's wedding. I really only wear dress shoes to weddings. Like, actually, no, no, no. I wear some not as dressy, but I wear some church shoes uh, to on my on my job interviews. Yeah, when I go on a job interview. Yeah, but mainly I wear the nice dress shoes at weddings. And that does sound like an odd question. No, I'm joking. I mean, you know, people, trust me, I get asked a lot of them. What I do for fun, Keith? Uh, I go hiking. I go on walks. Uh, I watch women's basketball. That's a big one. That's that's really when it's like free time, free time, and I'm like, all right, I'm relaxing, not doing it. You know, I'll I'll pull up a. These days it's like college, so I'll pull up. I already got, the, yeah, a, a game set to watch later. Um, but uh, yeah, I did, you know, hiking, women's basketball. You know, watch a show here and there. I don't do much. I don't do much. Sis drunk TV. I think you could be too dressy for job interview. Yeah. You know, I try to keep it. You know, business. You know, wear a nice shirt, nice pair of slacks, pair of, you know, decent shoes. But yeah, I think you'd be too dressy. Oh, Richard, you <laughs> cleaning your room, found some dust on your dress shoes. I mean, yeah, I think most of us don't wear dress shoes. Like, where are you gonna wear them? Yeah, like, where, yeah, I, you know, I got a pair in there for interviews. But yeah, at a wedding, I have the nice, the nice joints. At Abby's, I had the nice. I rented a pair for Abby's wedding. I had the nice shoes, you know, the, the the mirror shoes. You can see a reflection in them. Uh, Michael, advice for people on Social Security to make extra money? Not like, I mean, that's kind of a harder question to answer because I'd have to know the person's circumstance. Um, I would just Google it, how to make extra money, you know? Um, and then if you have anything special about you that, 
how to make extra money when blah 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 you know but dude Google's Google's Ricky like I don't think I've ever really acted on revenge in the past probably because I was too scared uh and now like yeah I just don't I hope I'm never put in a situation where I really feel like I need to avenge someone, but what does that do? You know what I mean? Like it, it's, you know what they say, when you go out for revenge, dig two graves, yours and the other person, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't, it's not healthy. It does nothing. So I just pray I'm never put in a situation like that. Throw some heels on Gaia. Hey, don't worry about the wobble. Dick. Is is there more to your stargaze? I'm reading your comment. I'm glad you found the book. I'm trying to do the second the second part of it. Oh, you retracted the message. Okay, never mind. Okay, never mind. Facts, Jay. Revenge make you more miserable than the person you're trying to make. Like, you know, because I feel like what happens with revenge is like, even if it, you you exact your, your vengeance upon someone, now what? It doesn't fill the void. You know what I mean? Like, that's what people think. They're like, oh, someone did this to me. I'm going to do this to them. But like, it, I feel like you, what does it change? If they took something from you, they've still taken it from you. It doesn't change anything. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't, it, it seems like it will, and it might make you feel better for a second. As soon as that feeling of feeling better is over, now what? You know what I mean? Like it just doesn't, and now you didn't create some more conflict. It's just not, you know, it's just a little too negative for me. You know what I mean? Keith, I think strict routines, there are some people who really like strict routines and thrive sticking by one. I'm not big on them because like, I'm a very, just like go with the flow person, you know, but some people really love, I'm like, if you love a strict routine, do it. If you don't don't. that's kind of how I look at it. Um, or if you think you could really benefit from one, maybe, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very like go with the flow. Like, you know, especially these days, I don't be, I don't be down on myself. If I say, Oh, I'm gonna do this. And then I don't, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, I try to keep my words to other people always, but like to myself, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do this every single morning. And I do it two mornings and I'm like, I don't wanna do that. I'm like, oh, I guess I just don't wanna do it. Like, if I'm willing to pay the price for not following that routine, eh, I'm probably so. Eli, uh, why do I like the, the WNBA so much? I don't, I, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's always weird to ask, someone or ourselves why we like something you know like why do you like the nba you know what i mean um we just like what we like so for me now i could give you some re like i just yes yeah, like i don't know like i just like women's basketball i will admit that part of it is i'd rather look at men for an hour at a time of uh, women excuse me i'd rather look at women for an hour at a time than men like i don't i get very little joy watching men run up and down the court like i just don't like i'm I'm really into women. So like, so like I would much rather watch women play basketball. And I do like the fact that it is kind of a closer community or smaller community of people who watch the WNBA. If I find somebody who knows as much about the WNBA as me, it's super, it's a great day. You know, everybody watches the NBA. That's boring to me. Um, you know, I just, I just like watching the ladies, you know. Not even from like a crazy lustful standpoint, but I just enjoy watching women play sports way more than men. Like, but I don't really rock with dudes. I don't really rock with a lot of dudes in real life. So like, it's just not me, you know. Uh, I don't watch UFC. Uh, retired twenty nineteen. Um, yeah, no. If I had to pick between hiking in the park or the beach, it depends on the park. 
You know what I mean? Now, if it's like hiking in the mountains, I'd pick that. But like a park, I don't know. It 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 depends on the on the park because the beach is amazing. So it'd have to be a nice park. I hope Brittany Griner gets back on the court. They better not keep her from playing again. Like, I'm not even going to think about that because it's going to annoy me. This whole situation is annoying me. Um, but I hope she'll be back. Hey, Kiana, checking in in New Mexico. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Best player in the WNBA. Uh, DT is definitely up there. Um, Yeah. I don't know. Uh. Yeah, DT is definitely up there. Donna Tarazi is up there. She's one of the, one of the greats. Um, now, I personally think Sabrina Unescu is going to be the GOAT eventually. I mean, if you just look at the stats she's put up in, what, two seasons, three seasons? So I think Sabrina Unescu is going to be the GOAT. But, you know, we'll see. Mark, I actually just canceled my StreamYard because I never use it. I just canceled. I'm like, why am I paying $19.99 a month? I never use it. I forgot I had it. So, yeah, probably not going to use do StreamYard anytime soon. It just kind of like, I don't know. Oh, uh, times when I was at a seasonal job and I was like, why do I put up with this? Um when I was at the Grand Canyon and they were like having us work like 11 days straight, no day off, didn't mention it. That was one of those times where I'm like, why am I doing this? And I left soon after, you know, 11, 12 days straight, didn't even say nothing. I just had to check the schedule. I'm like, wait a second, I'm not off again until like next Sunday. They're like, oh yeah. You know what I mean? So like, that was an example of time. I'm like, nah, why am I doing this? Like, I don't need for $14 an hour. I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, this is crazy. Johnny, what up? Hey, yeah, Eric, some people, some people think it's it's simping to like women's sports, you know. It's fine with me. <laughs> like, I I I still like the WNBA, whether or not people like the fact that I like the WNBA. So yeah, I, I, I respect that, you know. Uh John, I definitely think the Grand Canyon is, is impressive. I think, you know, that that's that's a, a spot that should be on everybody. That I don't want to say should be on everyone's list. A spot that if it's on your list, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, yeah. Views of the Grand Canyon. I don't think you'd be disappointed. So, yeah, I recommend it. Oh, Liz Cambage. I don't know what to say about Liz Cambage. I miss her being on the court, but, you know. I miss her being on the court. Overthinking is something, Ricky. I've I've all I've always had to struggle with. Um, I'm getting better with it. I'm getting better with it. Uh, but yeah, that is one thing that I was saddled with. But you know, it's way. So these days, I, I try not to overthink. Um, I worry less than I used to. But yeah, that's one of the things I've, I've always had to struggle with. It, Exactly, guy. Like that's I started to go down that road. Thank you for commenting that. I started to go down that road. I, I've just learned that like dude, but like so I'm I you mean like I I like women's sports, I'm a simp. You know I mean to me, like it's just weird to me, other dudes commenting on other dudes. You know what I mean? This this is that's what's always weird to me. Grown men who sit around commenting on what other grown men like is more simp like behavior to me than me just being like, oh, I like something. That's that's always been the thing. I, I look at that. And I'm like, why are you so worried about what I do? So 
you watching dudes run up and down the court, smacking each other on the ass, getting sweaty is normal behavior. Me watching women do it is weird, and I'm a simp for doing it. You seem very into, you mean, like, this is the type of stuff I'd be looking at. Like, well, I'm the weird one. By the way, you can like whoever you like, running up and down the court, getting sweaty. Do you? I'm not saying one's right or one's wrong. But I'm like, these dudes who spend all this time judging other dudes seems weird to me, bro. Like, that's why I was, I was like, I just be, I'm, it just seems weird to me. Let people do what they do. If you want to be one of these weird, I hate women because the woman I was married to divorced me and took all of my stuff and I have to pay a lot of alimony, fine, be that type of person. If you don't want to be enlightened and realize we're all equal regardless of gender, fine, be that person. But you have the right to think I'm a simp. You do. It just seems weird to me. That whenever someone like, whenever a dude interacts with women a certain way, this whole group of men jump on him. And I'm like, I refuse to be one of them dudes. Like, I'll be, you know what I mean? Like, I just not gonna be one of them dudes. Like, but once again, I have more female friends than male friends. So like, I just, I think I just, and I'm, I'm actually, you know, a, some, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I think I'm a regular human being who doesn't like judge people based on gender. So I'm not, I'm never gonna see it that way. I think we're all equal across the board. I just, you know. I don't know. None of the dudes I look up to was ever on that simp type talk. You know what I mean? The dudes I get my advice from women about, who's the dudes who's really no women or be the best men can. They, you know, they never was on that type of simp talk. Cause they was they was not judging other men. They was out getting the ladies. They was out putting in numbers, putting in twerk. They not sitting around judging other men. What are we doing? But that's perfectly fine behavior. Sitting around judging other men is fine. Sitting around bashing women, judging other men is fine. But if you say, hey, I like watching women's sports, that's simping. That's bad. That's wrong. It's just, I don't Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Uh, foof the goof. Super Chat Squad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Says, should women athletes get paid the same as men? Uh, Kelsey Plum, WNBA star, all-star game, uh, all-star was on a podcast the other day talking about this and I really like what she had to say about it. Um, we'll take the WNBA, WNBA, for example, they don't have the same turnout. They don't make as much money as the overall, the WNBA does not make as much money as the NBA makes. So she was saying, we just want to get the same percentages of the ticket sales of the merch sales, all that as they get. So I think, yeah, if the average NF NBA player's salary is 1% of the overall and based on talent and all that, but you know what I'm saying? I think if the, if the NBA player salaries total are 20% of the total taken from the NBA, I think the WNBA players should get 20%. Their total salary should equal 20%. And I mean, there's variations within it, but you know what I'm saying? I feel like along those lines, there should be, you know, some consistency. I think they should get paid more than they get paid. I'll say that. I don't think we have to totally measure them against the, the NBA, but I think they should get paid more. You know? Yeah. The, the, you can you can say, I I can be at a job and not think I should make as much as the vice president, but I sh I know I need a couple dollars more. You know what I mean? And so that's why, once again, we get very men versus women. Once again, I can be somewhere and be like, I don't think I should make as much as them, but I should make more. And I think that's what the women, especially like the WNBA, 
are saying is like, we just need to be paid more. The NBA has been around 7,500 years. They're only 25 years old. We're not there yet, but we're definitely not still down here where you're paying us. So, yeah, that's my argument. Definitely think Sophie Cunningham needs to make more money. Y'all need to pay Sophie a little more. Let me find out they don't give her a raise this year. After she 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 got in the record books like two or three times last season. I digress. I'm sorry. TA honey, what's up? What's up? What's up? I'm sorry. I'm digressing over here. Y'all got me. You know, I'm calm again. Got a little riled up. Got a, got a little. See, even when I get riled up, I'm not really riled up. There's only a couple of people uh, on the planet who've really seen me riled up. Um, yeah. Yeah, Jade, like Kelsey Plum was saying, like, if her jersey sells, she don't get a percentage of that. Stuff like that. They need to put, you know, restructure their contract. So, like, stuff like that. If her jersey sells, she gets a cut. I'm buying a Kelsey Plum jersey. I want her to get some of that money. When I buy my, I actually looked at a Sobe Cunningham jersey this morning. She should get some of that. You know, so stuff like that. There's ways to, like, pay them more. That isn't being like, oh, my overall salary needs to be equal. But, no, it's just like, you know, it makes sense. Hey, glad you like the long shrinks. I think there's there's lots of I, I think it's this goes back to not judging people by gender. I think there's lots of women who could coach on the NBA level. They just haven't been given the chance. Because they're women. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't I don't think women or men are better as basketball coaches because of gender. Um, and I long for the day when we see that. As, as many strides as we've made with gender equality, it still flabbergasts me that people still, <laughs> still think, oh, men are better at coaching in the NBA. No, there are not better coaches based on gender. Becky Hammond could coach in the NBA today and be better than half the dudes there. And so many other women could too. If men can coach in the WNBA, women could coach in the NBA. It's it's no difference. When are, when are we going to stop thinking that maybe because in general women are aren't as physically strong as men that they're not mentally strong? I just don't get like I'd be looking like I don't I'm like I don't think that's a radical concept. I'm like these dudes out here really think they're smarter than women. Like stop, bro. The kids now ain't having that. The kids now ain't having it. So I think it's going to change. I think women could be good football coaches. Why not? Don't sit on here and act like, you know, oh, football is so intricate that only the male mind can figure it out. Stop. There's what you know, women who watch football who know more about it than their husbands. They boyfriends. They girlfriends. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, we act like, it's crazy. It's crazy to me. Men and women are equal overall, my opinion. We're all equal. We may have different areas. Men might be physically stronger overall. Women might be like more nurturing and caring overall. But we're all equal at the end of the day. But I understand some people ain't going to get it. Some people will never understand this. Fortunately, the kids coming up now get it. So that gives me solace. Hey, Jim Monday, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you said Foof the Goof is your control channel. <laughs> uh, uh, I've done that before. I got a burner channel. It's a great response, though. Adequate 
it instead of uh, uh, equi equivalent pay due to viewership and revenue gap. Exactly. Exactly. You know, um, yeah, it's not like, oh, they make millions. We got to make millions. But it's like, no, like, just give us what we, we've earned. You know, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I appreciate the love. Super Chat Squad. Appreciate you checking back into your other channel. So, so I know who you are. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, all the stuff the youth is on now, I'm all for it. Most of it. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad they just think it different, man. We've been so entrenched on on this craziness, man. Like, we, you know what I mean? Like, and I think, I think the gender thing I feel strongly about because I have female friends. And so the ideal, especially like some idiot dude thinking he's smarter than them just because they're, oh, you want to let me? Oof. I wish somebody would. Oof. See, that's the type of stuff I get angry on. Um, you know. Now, retired 2019, I do agree with that. Are there things that the WNBA can do to, to make more money? Yes, I do agree. I do not agree with the way the WNBA is ran. Like, I do think they miss out on so much stuff. Because there are women's sports that make a lot of money. You know, so I think they need to get the right percentages and then they need to figure out how to bring the viewership up. I could think of a million ways to do it right now. I sit around and talk about this all the time. They don't have any star. They don't have they need more stars. They need some bad girls. They need storylines. They need rivalries. It's you know, all this, all this stuff. But I think because they are women. A lot of there's some things they really don't. The people who run it now are afraid to do. I'm telling you, the first time that if they had a female Dennis Rodman, I don't know who the bad girl, bad guys are now in the NBA. I don't watch. But like when I was coming up, Dennis Rodman was like the, 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 the bad guy. If they had a female version of that in the WNBA, I promise you viewership would go up. If they would start some rivalries. They let them fight a little bit. You mean, if they just made it, they got to make it a little more interesting. But now they just try to make it very like clean and mm -hmm, ladies, girl power. Ain't nobody tuning in for all that. Yeah, you know I mean, we need some drama in the NBA, the WNBA. People start tuning in. This is the world we live in. This is the world we live in. But or as it is now, they try to keep it very like fluffy and vanilla. And, you know, that ain't gonna work. People ain't tuning in for that. Hey, JP. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the journey. Welcome to the community. Glad you liked the videos. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you're getting some inspiration out of them. Thank you. I'm not saying turn it to the WWE, but like, I feel like you got to have some, you got to have some storylines. You got to have some rivalries. There has to be some drama. You got to get headlines. They don't get no headlines now. When was the last time you saw WWE a headline? That wasn't something like, oh, all-star game, championship. Like, you need some headlines. They need, like, Liz Cambage was headlines. She should have kept playing. They need to bring her back. She could be the bad girl. Get Liz out there getting all in people's faces. You know what I mean? Like you need you need drama. I don't think the WNBA can go global because there's women's basketball all over the globe already. It's just one product. And honestly, I feel like women's basketball does better in other countries. I know it does better in Europe. A lot of cities, like they be packing the stadium there. You know what I mean? So like, I don't think the WNBA could go global because people would be like, we already got, and the WNBA women play on those teams in the off season. So like, I don't, I don't know if it could really go global. I guess with TV, 
But like you know what I mean, like I just don't. I don't know. It's guys. It needs to. It can make it here. They just not doing it right, in my opinion. They just need. I don't know. I feel like when the leadership changes, it might. Someone needs to come in who understands. I feel like marketing in today's society, it needs to be marketed different, right? You know what I mean? It needs to be marketed as a totally different product than the NBA. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to wrap it up. It's going on three o'clock. I haven't eaten nothing yet. Um, your boy needs to eat a little something. Uh, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Really enjoyed the discussion. Really enjoyed the conversation. Big shout out, big shout out to the super chat squad. Everybody who came through, dropped a little money, but everybody in general, I appreciate that love of financial nature, but shout out to everybody who came through great comments. Uh, the lurkers, the thumbs uppers, everybody, all the love, appreciate all the love, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I love each and every one of y'all. I mean that not just a slogan. It's all love here. Uh, thank y'all so much for spending time with me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Talk to you later.